Welcome, listeners of Illusion, to the Dungeon of Confusion. Come with us now as we spin you a tale to quicken the heart and chill the blood. But of course, you are not familiar with me or this place. Let me remedy such by stating my name is Artie McNeil, the co-writer of this tale with my friend and your dungeon master for the evening, Nikolai Popsky. Through the question of what if, we created this place with its melancholic overtones and hapless villagers. And we threw down the challenge to any and all who felt themselves brave or foolish enough to step up and experience what we have created. To truly open up the dungeon to the world and see who bit down on the bait. But now I hear a group of such brave fools at her gates. Time alone now will show the true motives of their hearts. For now it's time to raise their portcullis and open the dungeon. Welcome to episode 2 of the Penis RPG Halloween Special. Though this is the first one you'll probably hear, this is episode 2 because the one with the cast will come out on Halloween itself because they break the story. That's all you need to know. But this week, and hopefully the first one of our guest podcasts, we have Dum Dum Die. So, would everyone please introduce themselves, uh, introduce your podcast as much as you want, and who you are, what you are, stuff like that. So we'll start with Arizima. Hi guys, my name is Nicole and I play the character Darby in our podcast Dum Dum Die. Basically it is an all-female D&D group and I think one of the greatest things about it is just being able to let loose and have fun. In particular, my character plays a transgender and that's basically it. Okay, and your character's name? My character's name is Arismia, and I am a human and I'm a fighter. I come from the Mulan tribe and basically all I want to do is I just want to fight for good. She's she's a fierce character. She's all about blood, gaining blood from bad people and people who just do the wrong things in life. And yeah, she wears this really cool velvet red robe and she uses a scarf to cover her face and so you can only see her eyes, which is hazel. Okay, next we have Illyria. Yep. Hi, my name is Wednesday, and I'm also from the podcast Dum Dum Die. In that podcast, I play the character Xanta Larian. In this one, I'm going to be playing Ilaria, who is an elven fighter. She has literally no people skills, but she can play the flute. Interesting. And that's me. Okay, Severin. Hi, my name is Kirsten. I play Oriel on Dum Dum Die, and I'm also the producer of the podcast. Well, one of the three. And today I am playing a tiefling magician called Severin, who's a navy blue tiefling with an extremely long tail and a long, like, very snappy suit and some snappy shoes. And he's a guy. And yeah. Okay. And finally, we have Darren Oaken Pokespike. <laughs> yes, who is being played by me, Tristan. I am the founder and other co-producer of Dum Dum Die. I once upon a time used to edit the podcast, but have since handed over the reins to Wednesday. Tonight, Darren Oaken Pokespike is a plump but stocky dwarf. And I imagine him moving a bit like a snake because he's a dwarven fighter. I'm imagining Bob from Tekken, if anyone has played the fighter game Tekken. No. So in 
a very similar fashion. He's got like a Hawaiian flowery shirt on, and that's pretty much all he has on the top of his torso. Black hair, a little bit of blonde streaks, and his long dwarven beard is plaited. Okay, so the start of this episode is you have all responded individually, of course, to a tavern wall sort of request saying that a very wealthy merchant called Florian Donwhisper is seeking aid to find his son. So you've all gathered around this table, which, you know, you've had your drinks paid for, you're very happy, and as evening draws in, this very obviously wealthy elf comes in and sits down at your table and says, th- th- Thank you, my friends. I, I, I'm I, very appreciative that you come here. I, I know that most of you are just here for the money, but it, it's an important thing to me. Well, money's important to me too. Good, good. I, well, if money keeps you honest, then, then that's what I will do. I will, I will probably pay you through it. I I know you've all come here because I've lost my son, and it's not so much I've lost him as I don't know where he's gone. He, um, well, the, the heart of the story really is that I am a trader by nature, and there's a small village up north that we'd heard from various people that they had wealth of gold and, and treasure, and so, you know, as a merchant we thought we'd maybe expand in that direction. So I sent a party up north to to put some feelers out, and my son was part of this group. He went up with them, and he felt he'd came of age, and he could, you know, represent his father and the family business and be the person who ran it up north. But after time, things just didn't seem to go out well, and his his correspondence I got became... The letters didn't, didn't seem to be as heartfelt as it were as it went on and it's as if he forgot about his home and where he came from now I when I send a party last I, I said please you know find my son tell him that you know his father cares about him and wants to know he's okay but they tell me that he doesn't exist they, they can't find him so unfortunately if, even if it costs me a fair coin then I will pay for you all just please find my son well uh yeah, right. Uh, I think we can uh, happily help you uh, find your son. Not a problem. Tell us, uh, perhaps you can help us with uh, some preliminary information. When was he last seen, then? Well, I, I, ha- I have the letters he sent me here, if, if they would help, but he was last seen in the village of Eisenport. Eisenport? Yes, it's a strange fishing village to the north that's about two days' ride. Right, well, I suppose we should start there, right, team? Ilaria sits sort of bolt upright on the chair and shuffles awkwardly. She's not making eye contact with anyone. Uh, I, right, team? I definitely agree with you. I think we should definitely go. But I think we, we need to get paid first, just a little bit. That's fine. I can. I said, how much do you, how much do you want for, for doing this? I mean, 200 gold, 300 gold each? I, I, as I said, I'm very wealthy. I can afford it. Yes, wow, I, you're I, wealthy, you say. As, as long as you bring my son back to, well, at least find what happened to him, I, I feel like a lost father. I, I don't know what became of him, and the part of me, it's the longing. I don't have closure. If he's happily married and he is indeed shacked up with his new wife, then I guess that's all a father could ask. Fear not. We will find your son, either find out what happened or return him to you swiftly. Fear not. Let us go. And Severin gets up and starts walking out. Azario follows. Okay, well, um, thank you. Um, please, as I said, just find out where he is. I will pay for your drinks tonight if that would help as well, but there's a coach that leaves tomorrow morning. You must be on it. It's the only coach that leaves. There's only one every few days. Uh, right, then uh, we'll catch uh, that one then, I assume. What's its name? Oh, it's the, um, it's the red coach that leaves in the morning. It's the one that leaves outside the inn over there. Uh, right, oh, it sounds good. Is everyone... On board, are we good to go? Oh, have we settled also 300? 300 gold? That is fine. If, if you can bring me back something for my son to prove that he is either alive or dead, then I will gladly pay you. And here is a down payment, and he gives you each a small bag of like 50 gold. Arismia takes it. I uh, pocket the gold as well. Okay. So. All uh, right. Uh, good, 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 good. Okay. So you spend the evening drinking, and you know, as you would do where you basically got a free tab behind the bar. And the next morning, you are all up relatively early and you get on this coach and it heads off into what looks like a sort of very dense forest. After about 
three or four hours of going through this forest it comes at the other side at this obvious forestry camp that's like a, a sort of small town that obviously has its foot very much in the, the forestry industry like very you know brawny men cutting down trees effectively <laughs> although there doesn't seem to be as many as you'd expect and as you draw into the town you pass a sign that says Missenden where the gentry go for labour hmm. what do you do? I love the smell of pine in the morning. Pine is really good for your skin, you know? I actually prefer it when the trees live. I'm not sure why people insist on cutting them down. Surely, they are much more valuable as they are. I didn't mean that you cut the whole tree down. I'm saying just a little bit, like a branch. Mix it up, put it on your skin. <laughs> it has a beautiful glow to it. Well, uh, sure, you could use it as a beautiful glow or you could enjoy the tree in all its splendor, but also then what are you using the tree for? We can make chairs, we can make tables. What would you do, Illyria, without a chair? So you wouldn't be able to sit and that's a problem. But then you're still cutting down the trees. Some of us are quite able to sit in trees. We don't need chairs. All right, noted, noted. Um, well, look, this is Missenden. We're looking for Eisenport. How far is Eisenport from here? The carriage slows down and you climb off the cart and ask, you know, what's going on, where's, you know, this isn't Eisenport, and the guy driving the carriage says, oh, we need to rest the horses, so we've got a choice, we can either go later tonight, or we can leave first thing in the morning, it's up to you, but for the next few hours at least the horses need to rest, so I suggest you go and have a look around the town, maybe find something to do for a few hours. Right. Cool, team. And something we shall do, and he gets out the car. <laughs> <laughs> so, Missenden is a very small town. There's like an obvious inn, there's a couple of small houses, and there's what looks like a like a sort of guild shop, like a kind of workshop, but it's been recently closed. It, it looks like everything of value has been like packed up and taken away, and the guild hall itself has been closed. Would it look like they'd left in sort of a hurry or, or uh, under duress? There's no sign of, like, disrepair, but there's also, it doesn't seem like they've taken everything, it seems like they've just taken everything that was immediately of value, so it could have been looted, but if it has been looted, they've been very tidy at looting. Severin, won't you come over here for a second? And Severin strolls over. What may I help you with? You're the magical top, right? You're the magical half-demon sort of a person. Uh, I don't know if you can fish out. Fish out is the wrong word. What's going on here? These people, uh, did they move in a hurry? Were, were they ransacked? Is this a problem? Severin, Do we need... Severin was too busy getting the fishing rod out of his pack as soon as he heard fish out. <laughs> <laughs> Someone mentioned fishing? There are a few small like lakes around the edge of the village if you do want to do fishing. <laughs> no, no fishing? How no, boring. like just, just use, use your, my eyes. Yeah, 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 your your magical eyesight or something. Just to, like, what's going on here? I don't know if we should be cautious. This, you this, know what? Uh, I, don't, I don't appreciate the tone of voice there, hey? And he like starts mocking Darren a bit. Like, listen, Oak. Okay. So we're going to go and check with the eyes. Okay, and we're going to go and look and schmuck what's happened. We. Okay, so you take the left side, and I'll take the right side. And we'll go and schmuck an investigation to see what's happened together. Okay? Enough with this magical eye bullshit. Listen, Severin, oak is a term reserved for dwarves who have proven their worth in battle. I'd appreciate it if we use it sparingly, but okay. Listen, do we need the elf with us? Severin looks at Ilaria. Ilaria is currently inspecting the ground trying to see whether or not there is a reason um, the town is looking so sparse. So she's not really paying attention when you look at it. She's like sniffing leaves or something, what trackers do. All right, well, seeing as we have a little bit of time while we uh, wait for the horses, let's see what's wrong with the store here. I don't suppose there's anyone around to take notice of us dodgy folk. It doesn't seem to be that busy, no. You're about early afternoon at this point so there's not really that many people around. In the distance you can see a small work party around trees, but around the streets themselves you barely see anyone. You occasionally see the odd woman just walking around, but that's about okay. it. Darren will turn to Arizmia. Arizmia? Yep. 
Uh, Rizmia, why don't you just stand guard there, right? We're just going to quickly see if there's anything of concern in this shop. That is okay. I will stand here. You can go and do whatever it is you want to do since I am the woman and I'm still a lot stronger than you are. And then she just like rolls her eyes. All right, all right. Didn't mean no offense. Right, 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 right. And then he's going to go. I don't know. I don't know where. <laughs> Investigate to the guild shop. Okay. You go up to the door. How are you going to get in? Is it barred? Is it locked? Is it ajar? Are you going to try the door? I look at Severin. <laughs> and Severin just makes a motion forward to open the door. And like looks at his nails as if he's not going to do it. Okay. Yeah, okay, uh, I'll do it. Do me a roll to see what happens when you try the door. Oh, yeah. You, <laughs> t- you touch the door, you push it a little bit, the door opens a little bit, and you fall backwards at hearing a noise. You think something must have just like leapt out at you. It turns out that there was just a small shop bell that made a sort of ding a ling a ling <laughs> noise, but because <laughs> tension was so high. It's you've just shot back and fallen down into the sort of pool of mud on the floor. Ooh! So everyone starts laughing. Right, well, uh, that was obviously a very nasty bell. Uh, just, <coughs> excuse me, just watch out there and uh, lead the way. Uh, sorry about that. And Severin looks at him and then just, like, kind of smirks and walks in through the door. Okay. So, you push through the door. Again, the small bell makes the slight dingling noise, but... Inside, it seems totally barren. Like, there's nothing here of any worth. There's a couple of empty barrels, there's a couple of empty boxes. However, on the floor, in the middle, there is a spoon. And I will just put a picture up of what the spoon looks like. Give me a second. It's a very Ooh, highly crafted it's a spoon. spoon. Okay. Uh, Severin will walk up and inspect the spoon and pick it up. Okay. You pick up the spoon. It seems to be made of some kind of very dense wood. It's very neatly crafted and it's very ornate. Severin, uh, what's, what's that over there? It's a spoon. All right, well, uh, it looks rather uh, finely crafted. Why would someone leave something so uh, nice looking in a shop if they were fleeing? Why would someone be scared of a bell? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. What spoon? Ilaria! And I call out for her. Severin okay. quickly hides the spoon. I enter the shop as well mm-hmm. and look up to Darren and Severin and say, yes, y- you-, you called? Darren got scared by a bell. No, no, that's not why we're here. Uh, just quickly, question, your thoughts on where the hell we are and what could possibly have happened in this area for a child to have gone missing? We suspect that people are fleeing for some reason, some reason dangerous, but we now have found a spoon, an item, Exhibit A, if you will. What spoon? What spoon? The, the one, the one that Severin, uh, Severin, show him. Show her, show her, show her. I don't have a spoon. I was too busy laughing at you getting scared by the bell. Listen, we so don't have time. you called me in here for nothing? I think he called you here to save some face. You know what? Never mind. At this point, you hear the bell ring again, and a small child walks in and says, <gasps> Excuse me, are, are you meant to be in here? Are you meant to be in here? Mm-hmm. This was my daddy's shop. Where is your daddy? Oh, um, mummy says he has gone North, he will be back soon. Stop asking! That's super weird. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> and he wants to produce a straw doll for the child. <gasps> the child sort of looks at it with a sort of element of glee in his face. And then he turns to you and says, I, I can make you a basket if you want. Oh, uh, a basket it, it, sounds it, lovely. It, it would cost money, but mummy says I have to charge. I can't give baskets for free. Why don't you go ahead and make that basket for me? I've got a couple of hours to kill. He contentedly starts sitting on the floor, starts putting this basket together, like weaving wood from a bag he's got with him. Sorry, may I ask a question? Do we know what's north of this town? All you know is Eisenport's to the north. Okay. All right. Darren uh, will just sort of lean over to Illyria and say, Illyria, did we actually get a sort of description of Dawn Whisper's son? Was it a, a young son? Like, could it be this kid over here? I don't think so. He did say that his son could have been married. 
like that. I don't know. I think he's dead. What if he's dead? He did say he'd still uh, pay us if he was dead, right? Let's take this conversation outside. And like Severin looks at Darren and Illyria very glaringly as there is a child in the room. Uh, right, right. Okay, well, it's uh, your transaction. Uh, I'm going to go outside and join Arismia. Okay. Okay, Illyria wants to just look around the shop, see if there's anything of interest. Okay. Do a roll to see if you find anything interesting. Yep. After about three or four minutes of looking around, you crouch down by a pile of what looks like discarded boxes. You open one of the boxes and you find a small hammer and chisel and look like crafter's tools, like woodworking tools. Interesting. Since it's pretty abandoned, I'm going to pocket them anyway and give them to the dwarf. Okay. When I leave the room, yes. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Small child. Yes. What is your name? Oh, daddy called me Tim. But mummy says my name has... I have I have new last... Well, no, I don't have a new last name because he's gone to... I, I, I'm just... I'm just Tim. Well, just Tim. My name is Severin. Nice to meet you. Hello. Do you want two colours in your basket or just one? Well, what colours can you weave? Um, I can weave dark wood and lighter dark wood. That sounds lovely. Why don't you do both? He nods profusely and then starts again. Severin starts pacing around the room, also inspecting uh, things, trying to ascertain as to maybe what happened, whether it was a flea or a divorce or something along those lines. Are, are you coming to live in our town and work here? No, we're actually looking for a lost boy. Oh, is he like but me? No, I think he may be a little bit old at marrying age. Not weaving uh, age. Oh, okay. He's actually in the town of Eistrum? Oh, I, is it Eisenport? Eisenport, yes, I wasn't. Mum, mummy says it. only... Um, and he sort of looks to the sort of thinking for a second of how to word it and says, Adulterous whores go to Eisenport. <laughs> Ah, so your father went to Eisenport? Mummy said he went north. Is Eisenport not in the north? He sort of looks at you like he's just figured that out. Ah. Oh. Maybe he went somewhere else. There's a lot of places in the north. Are you staying in the inn? Uh, depends on how long we want the horses to rest. You see, we came because, from the because south. Because my, my mummy's a very nice person. She gives cuddles for gold. Oh, she gives cuddles for gold, I see. Your mum must be a very lovely lady. Well, she, she was nicer before daddy left. I'm sure, I'm sure. Does your mum work at the inn? Um, she, she kind of frequents it. Oh, okay. And where do you stay, Tim? Oh, we, we have a small home over there. And he sort of points out the door to a small collection of... They look like temporary housing, but they look like they've been there a long time. Okay. Severin is going to try and see if there is anything else on him that he can give Tim. The only thing he seems to have is a fishing rod. That would probably be appropriate for a child. Tim, look over here. Yes. And he's holding the fishing rod. If you do a really good job of this, I will give you this. Oh, do do you not have gold? Mummy gets very angry when I take things that aren't gold. No, I I I, have gold. I took some beans once and I got beaten. Oh, no one likes to get beaten. That's always hard. But I was going to give you gold and this fishing rod. I feel like it would do you good in this area. He looks at you with quite sort of happy eyes and then you notice him sort of finishing the basket and he hands you this. It's not that big, it's about maybe nine inches tall. It's, it's enough to hold like a good collection of stuff and it's relatively well made. Why, thank you, Tim. How much do I owe you in gold? Um, he sort of looks like he's trying to calculate in his head and says, I, four, four gold pieces. Well, that's, the, that's what mummy told me I have to ask for. Then we don't want to anger mummy now, do we? No, no. 
and he hands him four gold pieces and Severin taps him on the shoulder and says, why don't we teach you how to use that fishing rod? He looks quite happily and he sort of runs out towards the lake. Severin will follow. He said, catch me at the lake. Okay, he runs off towards the lake happily waving the fishing rod. Okay, so Ilaria is outside after this whole conversation that happened and walk up to Darren and hand him the hammer that she found and say, Mr. Oak and Poke Pike, I found these inside. Maybe you have use for them? Oh, that's very sweet of you. Thank you. A dwarf can always use a hammer. Thank you very much. I'm just going to put it on my belt here because my back is pretty full. But thank you. Uh, listen, Ilaria, where the hell is Severin off to? They've gone fishing. Ah, Arismia? Yes. I assume no uh, evidence of any uh, passers by. So when Arismia was outside, did she notice anyone pass by? You notice a couple of women on their own. They usually seem to be in groups of two or three. They don't pay much attention to you. Okay, and is there anything else that she may have noticed that would kind of seem out of Um, sorts? The people here, when you do see a man, he's usually got a woman very much on his arm. The people dress in not finery, but they're not like covered in shit and mud. They seem to be like relatively average people. Okay. Darren, unfortunately, I didn't see anybody. There's nothing suspicious out here. I think that we need to wait and go to Eisenport. Well, good point. Could be fortunate, could be unfortunate. We don't yet know. I would you, you would mind joining me in having a chat to some of those tree fellas. DM, they were tree fellas? What were the people doing? Yes, the mo- for the most of the workers you see, you seem to be going into the inn and then back out to the fields. Hmm. Oh, then Darren will say, um, or uh, if not the tree fellows, maybe we should spend a few moments in the inn, scope it out, see if there's anything suspicious, and then we'll call Severin. I think that is a very good idea. The boy's mother, I think she's a prostitute. Oh, okay. Why would, why would you say that? Well, I was listening in on that conversation. It's happening right in front of me. And Severin didn't seem all too concerned about pointing out to the boy that his mother was a prostitute. Severin also pointed out the fact that it is entirely possible that the boy's father left for Eisenport in order to hook up with some, I don't know, um, what's the term? Oh my gosh, <laughs> I can't even think of it. <laughs> Adulterous women. Oh, so like a whore. All right, so this conversation is getting yes, a little yes, bit off yes, the rails. The okay, let's just, <clears throat> let's, uh, Darren's just going to walk off to the inn. Okay. So I said to Alaria, I'm pretty sure he's getting uncomfortable because he, he kind of knows the whoring part of it, if you know what I mean. And then she like winks at her. Ilaria starts blushing and she's like, I, I don't actually know anything. And maybe it was my fault, but we shouldn't have been discussing this. And I'm actually really sorry that I brought it up in the place. And then she runs after the dwarf rather awkwardly. Rizmia is looking very confused, but follows Darren in anyways. Okay, so we will do the inn before we do Severin and the boy. So you push your way into the inn. The inn is relatively full. It's mostly full of women, though there's about maybe a 60-40 split female-male. The men that are there, they're quite scrawny. They're not like the big beefy idiots you'd usually see being tree fellas. They look like, you know, relatively average men, normal size. Mm nothing more than that and some of them do seem to have like women like draped around them and being very not possessive but being quite obviously like this is my boyfriend this is my partner blah 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 blah. was there a name to the inn that we saw coming in the inn was called just called the message in arms okay all right so we see all of this in front of us The bar you see seems to be quite quiet. There's a about 30, 40 year old woman standing behind the bar who just seems to sort of wave you as you come in and ask if you're looking for work. I look at Ilaria. Why why are you looking at me? I look at Arismia. I don't understand why you're looking at me either. A little uh, sweat breaks out on Darren's (laughs) forehead because of his inoclophobia and um, he's gonna just wave back at the lady and sort of half shout at her, uh, no thanks, no thanks, thank you very much. 
after checking in on everybody. <laughs> the lady sort of looks to you, cups her hands around her mouth, and says, "Are you looking for a whore?" <laughs> <laughs> I look at Ilaria again. <laughs> Ilaria goes bright red and she looks down at the floor and she tries to hide behind Arismia. Then Darren will look at Arismia. Guys, I don't understand why you're so shy. I mean, it's just women. What is going on? Darren, uh, no, you want to for yourself? Uh, no thanks, no. <laughs> this is getting mildly out of hand. No, uh, thank you very much, bar lady. We're not looking for any odds, the, the but uh, perhaps an ale. We have many types. Twenty <laughs> gold for ten minutes. <laughs> uh, well, thank you. Uh, no thanks. Uh, listen, <laughs> do you have an ale? She grabs you a sort of flask of ale from beneath the bar and puts it up and says that'll be two gold. All right, I'm going to gingerly approach the bar and put down two gold. Okay. Arismia goes and sits next to Darren and then she's like to him, Darren, what is the problem? Do you prefer maybe, um, and then she like whispers it, men? <laughs> oh, we have those if you want them. It's not, <laughs> no, listen, it's not any of that, right? It's just, you know, the thing about dwarf and woman, you can't tell the difference between men and women. It's just dwarves don't talk about that sort of thing, you know? It's just, it's just a bit strange. Anyway, Ilaria. <clears throat> uh, Il- yes? I'm just going to call her over. I'm like, I need support in numbers. Oddly. Okay. Ilaria's <laughs> going to walk over. D- did I hear the end of that conversation? Or- yes, you did. Well, you can't generally tell the difference between a men and women either. We all look the same as well. So, so, so maybe that's also why I, I'm not really interested in this place. Do women always behave like this? Is this appropriate in public? Listen, some people have to make their money doing certain things like this. I know, I know. I'm just saying we have a very focused mission and we're trying to find a Dawn Whispers kid and I just feel like we're talking about oars and things. It's, it's just a little unnecessary. So, <clears throat> excuse me, barmaid. Yes. <laughs> uh, we're just uh, the three of us here with our partner out uh, uh, going fishing. We're just uh, looking for uh, information, really, about the uh, village of Eisenport. Do you know if anything's gone a bit strange? I noticed Everything you don't really have the... Look slightly quiet around you when that's mentioned. And the barmaid just goes, Nope. All we know is that we a couple of wealthy folk came down from Eisenport, hired a lot of the bigger lads, went away. We've not seen any of them come back since. Oh, that would explain the skinny guys around here. Well, there's apparently a lot of work up north for them. I mean, about every three months or so, usually a carriage comes back from Eisenport and says, you know, there is work for up north and they pay very well. Do you know what kind of work? I, I think it's building. I've I've never actually talked to the vendor. The, she came down, she was very dismissive of me, so I basically just called her a bitch and walked away. Oh, nice one. And then she kind of puts her hand up to give her a high five. She looks at you as if she's not really sure what you're doing. <laughs> Are you really sort of going like, to leave me hanging? Waves at you as well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Arismia just kind of puts her hand down and she's like pretty embarrassed. Listen, don't worry about it. We need to go uh, check it out. And then Darren's going to down his his ale and get up off his seat. Okay. Well, if you change your mind and you do want a haul, we have many of them here. And as I said, 20 gold, <laughs> 10 minutes. Or if you want a room with one, it's only 800 gold for the night. <laughs> Arismia screams after Darren. Yes, Darren, it's only a few gold pieces. I'm sure you will need this. In order he to rushes out. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, she just starts laughing and then she follows him out. <laughs> okay, so we all cut to Severin and the little boy fishing. So the two of them are standing and Severin has been showing Tim how to do fishing. And they've only managed to catch one fish so far. Okay, Tim. So just like I said, you're going to reel it in slowly very very slowly until you feel a bit of a tug then you're going to reel in quicker but making sure that you give enough line so that if the fish tries to swim away you he thinks he's got a moment of hope and actually you take it away slowly as you start reeling it again the small child nods and tries to do what you've said 
As everyone else comes out of the bar, you also notice a sort of middle-aged woman with long brownish hair and obvious bruise marks on one of her eyes. Walks up and says, Tim, what are you doing with that man? I'm teaching him how to fish after he gave me a basket. Did, did, Severin, did pay him? by the way. Yes, of course I paid him. I'm not a monster. She okay. looks at the small boy who turns around and says, She did pay me. I got four gold money. And the woman goes, right. And you see her kind of like doing her sort of jaw. It doesn't seem to be sitting in the right place. And she looks you up to you and says, Tim's well, mother. thanks. You must be Tim's mother. What's it to you? Oh, I'm just interested to see you. It seems Tim's father has gone to Eisenport. Did you talk to him about Eisenport? And Tim just sort of looks very sheepish. No, he never mentioned anything to me. He just said he was going up north. I'm the one who made the connection. You see, we're also going to Eisenport. We're actually searching for a very wealthy elf's boy. Of uh, you do you are. Know All you men of... go to Eisenport, leaving us, leaving your women behind with your kids to raise your family. Well, he was the son of a wealthy elf, and the wealthy elf, his name is Dawnspring, by the way. He's actually searching for a sign because he's never heard from him since, and he just would find out what happened. I wanted to know, did you encounter any such a boy that maybe came past in the town, maybe used some of the services? And he, and he gives her a... What a I do to keep look. my family from starvation has nothing to do with you. There's no judgment here. I just wanted to find out a little bit more if you may have seen him. Let's see how she reacts. Let's roll the dice and see. Hmm. She relents and tells you that although she has seen many different types of people come through, she doesn't remember a wealthy elf. Not in marrying age at all? She tells you that she's basically serviced a lot of men in the past six months and she'd rather not think about it, but for the most part it's mostly just been human and dwarf. There's not been any elves. Fair enough, fair enough. And please... Don't feel any judgment from me. My mother was part of the trade. She sort of gives you a a strange look and then sort of takes Tim by the hand and says, Thank you. We'll be off now. You can have your rod back. Oh, well, thank you. I was going to give it to the boy if he doesn't want to keep it. She looks at Tim and then says, You don't want to eat the fish around here. Ah, I see. Okay, well, Tim, try and make one of your own one day. You seem to be quite the little woodsmith. He nods very enthusiastically at you and then sort of waves the fish he caught around and his mum sort of looks at him just like, ugh. And Severin waves them off and starts to head towards the inn. Okay, at this point you hear a very loud handbell being rang and someone shouting, the cart is ready, the cart is ready. Ah. If we have orders we can leave now or wait till the morning. Uh, Severin starts heading towards the cart. Did we also hear it? Yeah. The you you the came car. out of the end because Darren was very much trying to leave at this point. <laughs> okay. okay. Ilaria bolts for the cart and jumps onto the top of it. She doesn't want to ride inside. That's fine. So it's, it's uh, getting into early evening at this point. Right, I suppose that, that means we are making an evening trip. Okay. Yes, it, it does mean that. Okay, so are you wanting to leave now or are you wanting to leave in the morning? Right now, please. Right now, yeah. Okay. So the car sets off, and eventually after about five, six hours, so just getting into kind of like late evening-ish, you arrive into the next village, which is called Bishop Under Puddle. And when you arrive, you get pulled to the town square. There is a quite large inn called St. Randolph's Rest, and there is a temple. It looks like it had much more footfall than it ever does now. And in the middle of the town, there is this plinth, where there is this, it's like a crutch that's been placed on top of this plinth and it looks like it's been used by a very heavy person. Uh, would we know that this is Bishop Under Puddle? There was a sign when you walked in. Ah, uh, on uh, the way. spelt P-U-D-L. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and sorry, Bish, it's Bishop Under Puddle. B-I-S-H-H-O-P Under P-U-D-L. Bishop. The puddle. But on the way, Darren would have told Severin what they learnt in the inn about men being hired for work in Eisenport. Severin would have nodded and not returned the information. 
<laughs> As we pull into town, I suppose uh, Darren would pipe up and say, Rot, team, should we uh, take a rest for the night or is there something we want to do you, before? As you get off the cart, the cart driver basically says, well, next one will be tomorrow afternoon, I think, at this point. Look, judging by how tired the horses are. But it depends. If the horses have a good night, then maybe we can leave in the morning. Rot, uh, noted. At this point, you notice two reasonably attractive women come out of the inn and immediately walk up to Darren and go, Hi. You, <laughs> oh, you, you've I just come to a wonderful <laughs> village. How about we give you the rest of the evening? And they start trying to sort of like, they like run their hands over you and just sort of start trying to like gently move you towards the inn. Uh, 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 I'm, I'm uh, with uh, these people, these fine people over here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Not interested, not interested. Arismia is laughing so hard. So, Darren, are you sure you don't want to go with them? Oh uh, no, we've got very important things to do. I thought we were going to go look at the uh, temple. Temple, excuse me, we're going to a temple. Uh, and just run off in the direction of that. As you run off, the two girls put their hands in their mouth and say, It's fine, ten gold each. <laughs> <laughs> Devon catches Darren and he's like, Oh, Darren, don't deny the good ladies a good time. Don't be rude, and then like squeezes his shoulders. Severin, you wouldn't understand, all right? It's a dwarf thing. I may not understand, but these women are asking to have a good time with you. I think it's very ungentlemanly of you to say no. I have a very focused mentality, and I'm trying to get us all to find this Dawn Whisper child. So can we please just keep focus? What exactly uh, do you mean by a good time? I think a bit of company would do Darren some good. Ladies, our dwarf is rather shy. The word I know he talks a big game, but when it comes to actually following through, he's a bit of a how would the word be? Uh, a dud. Yeah, a dud. One of them goes, "Oh, but he's so cute," and starts ruffling his face. <laughs> I Madden. think he may get along best with you, and then he points at the one who was like ruffling his face. <laughs> I dare say I'm about to take offence, so please excuse me before I am very rude. Thank you so much. Good night. <laughs> Spoil sport. And then he's just gonna like annoyedly you shuffle off the temple. <laughs> well, like yeah, like sort of shuffly, like and like. It's like oh, someone's oh, trying oh, to. Oh. It's like someone's trying to seduce a nun. <laughs> <laughs> The girls turn to Severin and go, well, if he's not interested, and so give you a very obvious wink. <laughs> ladies, 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 I don't think so tonight. Although I wouldn't mind enjoying a drink with such lovely ladies. They sort of look a little bit saddened, but they tell you that they'll be in the bar waiting and give you, a, again, the very obvious wink. <laughs> Order a drink for me in the meantime. They go, well, you'd have to pay us to order you a drink, you know company doesn't come for free. I should have put more gold in my character sheet, I don't realise. They're doing such expensive things. There, there is a point to you having very limited gold at this point. Yes, this is true. He gives them four pieces of gold. He says, why don't you entertain yourselves? The two sort of squeal and go, ooh, and then sort of like run into the tavern. Okay. What a waste of money. <laughs> and then... Arismia like shakes her head. What is a waste to you is entertainment for others, my dear. Do you care to join? No, Let's thank you. Drink. I'm okay. I think I'm just going to walk around and find some clues. Well, I'll tell you what what you can see at the moment. So you've got the inn, you've got the temple. There's like a very large lake just to the side of it, which the town seems to be built next to and over, which is the Lake Puddle. And there's again lots okay. of small houses. Okay, Arismia is just gonna walk around and she's just gonna, like, she's just gonna look intently on her surroundings and see, like, what kind of seems out of place. Okay. So she's not really going anywhere specific, she's just walking around. Okay. Like a few feet away from this, Darren just pipes up, Temple! I did say Temple! Can we just, can we Temple, please? <laughs> Ilaria will head towards Darren because she is very confused and when she gets to him she's going to be like Darren, do all women behave like this? Is this normal? Should I be behaving like this? Uh, Definitely, Ilaria. 
Severin, don't confuse the elf, please. L- listen, it's different with humans. I'm not entirely sure. Just maybe just observe for a little longer, Ross. Okay, but we've been in two towns already and it seems that the women all behave in the same manner. I'm beginning to wonder whether or not I'm normal. Listen, don't get too caught up in your head. That was one town, this is another town, and this one has a temple. Can we maybe just go to the temple? Maybe we'll be enlightened to buy something, you know? Okay, okay, if you say so. Then he's going to head off towards that. So, you want to go to the temple, yes? Yes. Yes, there. Good. So, you start walking up to the temple. The temple, again, is quite grand. It's got a lot of steps, and it's made of mostly stone. As you get to the top, it sort of opens up to this sort of very flat area that's obviously used for praying. And there's quite an elderly priest, and he's standing in front of what looks like a statue of a very rotund man who is wearing like a very long brimmed hat and he is also carrying the crutch under one arm and as the priest notices you he turns when he goes welcome welcome dear friends have you come for the pilgrimage of saint randolph uh sure yeah saint randolph uh, please it be his name uh, wonderful wonderful um come forth come forth you you'll pray together Darren gives like a really, uh, yes. what's that look like? That Please help me look to uh, Ilaria. And Ilaria says, Who, who's Randolph? Oh, St. Randolph. He's, he's a wonderful patron here. And he gestures towards the incredibly fat man on, in the statue. And he goes, <laughs> he was a, a very sacred, blessed man. He, he, he's, a, one of, he's one of plenty. He was a fantastic individual. And... I know though his timely death came at the fact that he ate all his supplies while trying to climb the mountain is aside the point. He is a wonderful man and he, he's a saint in our eyes and he was so pure and he preached the word better than anyone. Right, and uh, what was this word? Oh, it was one of plenty that everyone should share their food. She... Come, you, mu- you must have some food if you're doing the... If you're doing the um, pilgrimage, you must have some food to donate to the, the great cause of St. Randolph. We will sit and eat it together, brother. Uh, yeah, and he's gonna... <laughs> in my backpack, I have cutlery. Uh, he's just gonna whip out his knife and fork and be like, I don't have anything on me at the moment, but... Uh, oh, have, maybe... have, have you eaten all your supplies, brother? I don't think we've actually had anything to eat all day. I'm actually a bit uh, piggish oh, right, now that well, you mean... Um... <laughs> well, uh, I, I, I don't have much left. Um, he sort of walks behind the thing and says, I've got a little bit of porridge, that's about all I have. Well, I mean, I, I happen to have some cutlery and some friends. Perhaps we could uh, have a sit down with you. Well, um, Maybe we should ask those really friendly women and then share the food, like St. Randolph says we should. Uh, well, let's let's just leave the woman, shall we? Uh, Severin dealt with them. Never mind, never mind them. But uh, just us is fine. Just us is very really fine. Listen, Mister Mister Priestman. Uh, yes. We are looking for uh, someone by the name of Dawn Whisper. Florine Dawn Whisper's lost Was his he, uh, son. Uh, did he do the pilgrimage? I mean, the mountain is far to the south. I look at Severin. Yes. Was uh, Dawn Whisper's son on a pilgrimage? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, no, Mr. Priestman, no. Not not a pilgrimage per se, oh, just then some then work. It, it might not have came by this way, but if, if you do come on the pilgrimage, you know, the mountain isn't too far. It's only five days' ride, and, I mean, maybe you'll reach the top like us and Randolph didn't manage, but the plinth we tried to put on the top of the mountain in his honour was enormous, considering how much work it took to get it there, but... It's a beautiful place, and I implore you, you should go and see it. Is it, is it near Eisenport? Because that's where we're going. We're going to Eisenport. Oh, so you're, so you're not on the pilgrimage. <laughs> no, dear chap, sorry, we're not. I'm oh. going back to the bar. I don't even know how I ended up here. Well, um, if, if you do go north, tell them that the pilgrimage is still open, that temple's still here and St. We'll Randolph's, Randolph's crotch is still down in the town for the world to see. Uh, right, we will uh, definitely do that. Thank you for your time and thank you for this porridge. Takes like one big spoonful. <laughs> well, um, I guess. Thank you. 
<laughs> he looks very uh, crestfallen and goes back to sort of. Severin, as he's walking out, is like, "You really should pay him." Oh right, <laughs> sorry. And then I'll just pull out like a gold piece and leave it somewhere. Uh, what, what, what is that for, dear man? Right for the the, the porridge and the time and the, the the effort and the you know the hospitality. Oh, right. Well, we will invest it in more porridge. Thank you. <laughs> wait, wait. Is that normal? Should I leave gold too? No, no. Never mind. Just just come along. Okay. Where was Arismia in all of this? Arismia was walking around in the town, just kind of wandering. Oh, you never came with us. No, I didn't. Yeah, so she's just walking and speaking to some of the locals um, and just asking them if they've seen Dawn Whisper's son anywhere. The people you speak to, again, it seems to be about majority women. The men that are there are the women attached in their arm are very, like, if you try and talk to their man, they are very giving you daggers and, like, you know, I will kill you if you say anything kind of looks. Yeah. And the ones especially of children, it seems like the men very much are the ones carrying around the children. Because like it's like the women always insist on like holding on to their arm. Right. Okay, so what she's gonna do is she's going to speak to mainly the women with especially if they do have kids around them. And yeah, she basically just wants to ask them if they have seen Dawn Whisper Sun and she's gonna offer them gold if they can give her any so. like you, Good as, soon as, you as soon as you mentioned Don Whisperer, they go, no, I've never heard of him. Where, where was he going? You really haven't heard of him? Or are they, you just saying you haven't heard of him? They shrug and they say, we get many people through. How long ago was it? A week? Two weeks? Well, I mean, I think it was... Does Arismia remember how long... Um, you didn't actually ask the guy at the start, so... You don't okay. know how long it's been. Look, it must, be, must have been a few weeks, but if you can give me any information then maybe I can give you a few gold pieces for your time. What, what do you want to know? I want to know if you've seen anything suspicious. If you've seen a bunch of grown men within marrying age going to um, Eisenport. She gives you daggers and the man she's with sort of goes, Oh, my, a lot of my buddies went at Eisenport. I always thought about it myself. And she gives him a look like, Don't you fucking dare. And then gives you a look of, no, we know nothing about it. Bye. And just walks on. Listen, don't you want any gold pieces? She, again, just ignores you and keeps walking. So you want your kid to starve? And then she's like screaming as she's walking, (laughs) as she's walking away. What kind of a mother are you? And like, shit, (laughs) why are they asking me? (laughs) And then she's like, okay, well... I guess it's time to go to the bar and drink then. And then she turns and she heads to the bar. Okay. So you turn up in the bar. Yep. And are you all in the bar or is it just Arisma? Oh, well, did you mean like... Back to the bar, definitely. Okay. Oh, did yeah, you I mean, mean like turn up at the bar like I was just at the bar, like turn up like she turned what, what? up at the bar? Nicole, I'm not sure they know what turn up is. Oh, okay. Okay, never mind. Sorry. So I, she I'm, means okay, like I'm partying at the bar. Like partying, oh, right, like okay. that kind of turn up, yeah. All right, so I'm just going to assume you're all at the bar now. Yeah. Yeah. I would have followed the group. Okay, so you're all at the bar now, and again, when you walk back into the bar, the bar is it's about 70, 30 women to men in this bar. And the men that are there, as I said before, are like very much like this is the man and this is his wife with him there are no parties of men on their own but there are lots of parties of women on their own who are drinking very heavily at some point as soon as we arrive i think darren would turn to severin and just say listen uh, but i know you're the only other guy in our team yeah so i just want to talk to you about what you've observed is it strange mathematically speaking that we've been to two towns and the first one had about i mean i'd say a 60 40 split of of men to women and now we're looking at a 70 30 and we're moving further north and the men are gone i think we might be in a crisis here and i don't know i'm not saying it's a dwarven thing but this is a problem man problem i see no problem all right well maybe it's not useful talking to you i'm just I don't know, it seems weird that the men are missing and possibly this is why Dawn Whisper's kid Darren. is missing because he's a man. Darren, Darren, Darren. The cup is bountiful, why do you not taste the wine? 
Is it, I don't even know where we hang out. I don't know either, to be honest. You're such a... What's the word? Uh, prude. I'm going to ignore that and I hope that it wasn't an offense that I need to take. You know what, my friend? Why don't you have this drink, sit with these two women, regale them of your tales, and ask them where the men have gone. He yeah, like right. tacks him on the shoulder and then like gives him his drink and walks to Ilaria. Okay. You know, I, I've never really seen a tiefling in your life before. What do well, they like I'm doing? Coming. I'm here. Ask me anything you want. Uh, do all tieflings like to spend time with adulterous women? If it's worth our interest. Adulterous or not adulterous doesn't really faze me. Okay, so is it normal for women to behave in the way that all of these women have been behaving in these towns? What? Women who either cling onto their men very possessively or throw themselves at any man who passed? Well, yes. Is that normal behavior? Well, it's, it's a bit extreme from what I've seen, but I know. Why don't you go speak to that lovely bartender and ask? And he, like, pushes her forward. Okay. And then Arismia joins the both of them and she says, So what are you guys talking about? How the women are crazy. Hmm, the women are quite crazy here, aren't they? Keep your voice down, woman. So it's not normal. No, I don't think it is. But judging by the amount of women they are here, I'm pretty sure they're pretty angry because, you know, their men have left them. It's probably why. Where did they go? Well, I'm guessing they've all gone to Eisenport because I was chatting to a woman right now and just the mere mention of it, she kind of got very upset with me. I thought she was going to kill me. Can everyone roll me a d20, please, to see if you notice the reaction of everyone around you as soon as you mention Eisenport? Okay, Darren is too busy being terrified by women. Yep. Um, (laughs) And Arrhythmia is uh, too busy telling the story. The other two of you, however, notice that there has been a hushed silence falling across the room as soon as you mentioned Eisenport. Ladies and few gentlemen, I hear that... There's been a bit of a hush turn around. Anyone care to fill us in? <laughs> a lot of people giving you daggers. The barmaid goes, All right, come over and we'll talk for money. Of course, I wouldn't expect anything else. So the barmaid tells you that they have quite a lot of people come through because they're a pilgrimage town. And there used to be a fishing town. But the lake outside, someone from up north created a deal. They wanted to dig towards Lake Puddle to sort of combine it with the other lakes from the north and they refused but ever since they refused they've noticed that something in the water has been killing the fish. So their fishing village, which basically used to survive and thrive for years, has recently lost a lot of its work and the men who were here that aren't happily married have all left to work up north where there's apparently work doing building. Do you know building for what? She just sort of shrugs and goes, I just got told building. And no one... I Never assumed mind. it was ships, but I, I don't know. Does that attach to a lake or to the ocean? Well, what does Eisenport actually hold? Eisenport is on the coast. Oh, okay. So, did they want to connect a, they, a, they wanted the to ocean connect, to the lake? or They wanted to connect us to the lake by Limestock Bay. Ah. because the lake up there used to thrive and it's not been thriving for a while but they seem to want to connect the lakes it's as if they wanted this running channel all the way down from the coast they said they would help us distribute supplies but we didn't take them up on it seems to be a pity is it not well we we, for something we seem to be cursed since then because we can't seem to get any fish anymore like the ones we do get are ill like mutatedly ill like some of them only had one eye and things they, they don't look healthy you can still so cook surely them surely opening just... up the the channel would allow for fresh fish to arrive well, and for that, the town to thrive that was one of the things they told us it would do but our elders refused they said it, it wouldn't do well and one of the elders especially told us that St Randolph walked from Eisenport he didn't t- take by boat 
mainly because he would sink the boat because he was rather a very heavy man, but he still walked there. Well, walked and took a cart, but they, he said in a religious purpose that Lake Puddle should remain untouched. Well, perhaps untouched because the fish is now tainted. We, we wouldn't want it infecting we, we the other lakes. We have been able to cook the fish, but it, there's been less and less usable meat on them. The town further south, what's it called again? Miss- Missenden. Missenden, yeah. Missenden. They also seem to have a problem with the fish. They don't eat the fish there. I was well, fishing they, with a boy. They contacted us and told us that they had accepted the deal to link the lakes together, but when we had declined it, the deal had gone sour. Do you suspect poisoning? We're not sure what to suspect at the moment, but with all the sort of crafting men left and very little remaining, we, we get by on what we can. I see. And what can I expect when I get to Eisenport with this hush of people? Is there anything that would be a nasty surprise for she my friends? She sort of spits on the ground and says, I don't care. I don't go that far north. They've taken too many of our people. You never hear from them again. It must be a life of luxury up there for them. Not like back here being left stuck with a family on your own. Well, that's certainly not acceptable, and I, I deem to write it if I can. She sort of goes, hmm, okay. Well, if you're wanting to help us at the moment, then I suppose you could hire one of the girls, and she gestures to the two girls that are currently eyeing up Darren, and says, <laughs> Cassandra should be available as well, but I think she's currently with a client, and at this point you see a sort of very, very skinny girl climbing back down the stairs trying to sort of realign her jaw. What exactly are the girls hired for? Well, whatever the client wants, really. They're alone with them for ten minutes. I think Darren would be very keen, but he needs a special kind of girl. He needs a girl who will be just as coy as he is. Do you have a girl to suggest? Well, we only really have the three girls. Hang on, and she's... So of the three, who would help a shy boy out of his shop? Oh, all of them together, if you're really paying. No, no, sort of, let's, let's she, keep it one. He's easily overwhelmed. She walks to a nearby table and sort of speaks to a girl there who looks quite drunk. She walks back and says, well, Lucy will do it, but no way, no, she's not into that anymore after the last guy. No way? No rough sex up her arse. Okay. Completely she, understood. She, did, she took a long time to walk normally to after to the him. last one. He's probably just going to talk, knowing him. No, oh, that's fine. Lucy says she'll do anything he wants, but again, it'll be the ten gold. Severin shoots a Rizmia a look. So, are you keen to help out a friend? Well, I mean, if it's going to help him loosen up a little bit, then I don't mind. And then she gives the ten gold pieces. Okay. So, True you give it to the barmaid. Indeed. The barmaid goes down and says, Hang on, which one of your friends is it? The good-looking dwarf over there. Do you see her whispering to the girl and pointing towards Darren? The woman stands up, looks slightly uneasy on her feet, staggers forward, grabs Darren by the wrist and goes, Come on then, you're coming with me. And drags hey. him upstairs. Oh, hey, hey, my goodness. <laughs> uh, Darren, just, he's looking at everyone like eye after eye after eye, like what the hell, what the hell, what's happening, what's happening, what's happening. So you hear a door slam, you hear Darren scream, and... <laughs> <laughs> so what are the rest of you doing while this... Occasionally, every 20 seconds or so, you hear Darren scream again. So what are the rest of you doing while this is going on? <laughs> Severin looks at Arizia and he's like, did a good thing. I know. I was about to drink now. And then she calls the bar lady and she orders three drinks for herself, Severin, and Ilaria. Okay, so you get given drinks, the barmaid turns to go, he's a loud one, isn't he? He's new. Yes, I think it's his first time. And then she giggles. <laughs> Ilaria's like, his first time at what? What takes ten minutes? Why is he screaming like that? Are they fighting? Ilaria, all questions I think you need a drink. time. Yes, for now, just 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 have a sip of this alcohol, please. It will it will loosen you up. You're also quite uptight. Um, do do people drink alcohol? Do all people drink alcohol? Is is it the thing that one does? Place? Yes, yes. it is. Yes, it is. And then Arismia <laughs> takes the cup and then she like downs it down Laria's throat. <laughs> She's like, drink up, drink up. 
Okay. Okay. So, okay. I don't. I don't resist. I'm. I'm far too socially awkward. Resist. Okay. So <laughs> the drinking continues, and you continue getting slightly smashed. Ten minutes later, this girl, you see the woman who went up with him walking back down. She sits back down and begins scratching her crotch. And as a couple of seconds Charming. later, Darren reappears, looking very startled. <laughs> yes, with with uh, the hammer that Ilaria gave him in his hand. Now what on earth are you doing with that? He's gonna take really slow steps towards Severin and say, Ah oh, no, that was your doing. You're welcome. And I'm not gonna say it was unpleasant, but it was Moose is strange. <laughs> <laughs> Will you just tell me that in that time you did something of use with our mission, please? For sure. Would you like to know what? Yeah, just tell me. And can I have another ale, please? Severin then, like, kind of gestures with his arms to Ilaria, who I'm assuming is now feeling a little tipsy after downing her whole drink. After downing two or three drinks, at least at this point. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We got her drunk. That's it? What well, I mean, is that it? I've, got, I've made you lose your virginity and got her drunk for the first time. How many more firsts do you want me to do? I may be a magician, but I'm not completely magic. Listen, there's going to be no <laughs> more extortion and things. Thank you for the debut, Severin. Really appreciate it, but not really. I think I'm just going to retire for the night and wait for our coach to take us to Eisenport because this is just... It's becoming a little bit unbearable. And Arismia? Darren? Please don't help him. Good night. Oh. Listen, I was not involved in anything. I was sitting here with my drink in my hand and I was enjoying the scenery. The barmaid tells you that she can give you rooms for the night and asks if you want any company in the rooms. I think I'll have a single room by myself, thank you. How much is that? She tells you it'll cost you like 15 gold for the for the night. Good grief, it's a bit expensive. And I'm going to turn to Ilaria and say oh, listen, how uh, much gold? Weren't you given 50 gold at the beginning? We, we were, hey. Yes. yes. Yeah. Well, I've spent Less- one. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm a dwarf. Um, Arismia <laughs> says to the bar lady, she's like, how much is it for all four of us to stay in one room? Hmm, without company? Without company, we have each other's company. Oh, okay. It's um, special like that. Not like that. He like gives a wink. Goodness. She looks down says, it'll be 20 gold for one big room. Okay, that's okay. Everybody put in five, ten, and then she's like counting on her fingers. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Five gold pieces <laughs> each. Yep, I give. Okay. Severin no, looks I... at Arismia. Yeah. With a knowing look of, you know he doesn't have any more money, but he's not going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> and then Arismia's gonna, gonna look at Alaria and say, Alaria, don't you want to please lend Severin a few um, gold pieces? Okay, okay. I, I will, I will. Okay. And then... Arismia winks at Severin. Severin winks back. <laughs> so I give Arismia 10 pieces. Mm-hmm. So you, you pay for your rooms and you retire for the evening. The next yeah. morning you wake up. Can Darren please roll me a d20? Hey. Oh no. <laughs> what have I got? Uh, Darren <laughs> wakes up with a slight, very, very strong itching sensation. <laughs> Brilliant! So worth it! Uh, Severin, Severin, I'm just gonna say that the rest of my life is you to blame. Oh, if you just put a bit of itching powder, you should be. Alright, well, I think the sooner we find Donald to skid, the better for me and my soul. So, can we please move along? Okay. I think that's a very good idea, but I'm very hungry, guys. I need to eat, I need some food in my system. So why don't you collect the breakfast? I will organize the coach and we can get on with this trip. No, 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 no. With breakfast comes expenses. I don't and, have any expenses. And Seven goes, well, I'm not the one who's hungry, my dear. Well, fine. We will get food, but only for ourselves. And then she like, she's very upset with Severin. So she's just kind of like, whatever. 
<laughs> Sarah is broke, my darling. There's no, you're not going to get any money from to get the 50 gold pieces that everyone got in the beginning. <laughs> Well, you all sort of scavenge some sort of breakfast and what you can from the bar. It's, it's enough to keep you going for the rest of the day, but it's not very much. And like pops a, a, a bar olive. <laughs> <laughs> and, and some peanuts. Yeah. The coach is ready to leave. So you yeah, can leave just Bye, before the afternoon. Okay, once again, Alaria is going to ride on top. She wants to be in the open air. Okay. Arismia hops in. Mm-hmm. Darren will try not to scratch. <laughs> Severin's going to smack Darren's behind as he walks into the carriage. Ooh! <laughs> right, so the caravan again leaves and it sort of rattles its way up north. Eventually, as you get close to the next one, you can smell the sense of, like, this is obviously a mining town. And as you draw into the town itself, everyone around you, like, there's lots of women in very, like, thick black cloaks. There's a basically a fish market where you, all you hear is fish, <laughs> fish, <laughs> and all the women look very pasty, very they're very red faced. Like there's no men at all here. You don't see any of them. The younger women you do see seem to be coming from or going to the mining, sort of the limestone pits. But the all the women you do see walking around are a lot older. They've got like red chapped hands. They're not pretty. They look like they've been working very hard for a long time. Was there a name to this town? Did we see it coming in? Yeah, this is Limestock Bay. Limestock Bay. Ah, Jaren, this seems a town made for you. I'm not looking a single woman in the eyes the whole time. I do have something to be ashamed of. I'm just saying I will have no encounters with a woman on this part of the trip. It's going to be a little difficult when there's absolutely no men in this town. Buck up! And he like taps him on the ass again and like carries on walking. <laughs> As you draw into the town centre, there's a, a very obvious hanging victim, like someone that's been left to hang. And above the gallows it says, we will not abandon our gods. That's deep. And the arm seems to have been like pinned to point towards the road out of the town. In which direction okay. do we know what's in that uh, direction? Towards the north. To whom? Ilaria uh, gets up and she bolts towards where the hanging had taken place and she cups her hands around her mouth and she shouts out that all the men go to Eisenport. <laughs> you are getting glared at by every single woman there, including the ones trying to sell fish. <laughs> this is slightly disturbing, guys. Well, wouldn't you expect the same if you abandoned your god? Well, which god are we talking about yet? That is a very good question. There's an okay. overall extension of fish at this point. Okay, Severin oh. is going to grab the nearest lady, but in like a, a charming way. Get off me! What do you want? <laughs> I want to know your god, my lady. My what? Your god. What do you mean? <laughs> well, the sign above says we do not abandon our gods. No, I understand gods, but I want to know the gods. Oh, right. Well, she spoke of the gods in the eyes and pot. We don't talk about them. Why they're don't we talk to, about them? They're not our gods. They're their gods. They don't belong so here. Your gods? They don't belong here. I am confused. Who are your gods? Lady? I don't think she's answering the question properly. Lady, whose gods are you talking about? What are their names? What do they do? Our god is one of fish. They used to support it. We used to get lots and lots of fish. That's where all the money came from. And then we used to kill wolves. Stab them. Stab them in the eye. Stab. Stab the wolves. Stab the wolves. <laughs> okay, we get to stab them. It's very violent. It's very well done. Proud. The eyes and okay. port, they're, they're just men. They just want our men. They don't care about us. It seems they got your men. And they talk right. about abandoning our fish god just because our lake became toxic. It still you gives fish. Not... Look at it. She picks up a fish. It looks sick. Its eyes are like bulging. It, there's white around the gills. It's wilting. It stinks. And she's waving it in your face. See? They're still fresh. Uh, as tasty as that seems I, uh, I don't eat fish unfortunately and then, what do you mean um, you don't eat fish 
I don't eat fish. I'm actually a vegetarian. Well, Arismia throws up. She throws <laughs> up onto the fish that the lady is holding. And she You ruined like, this fish. You've got to give me money now. Really? I ruined the fish? I think the fish was already ruined before that I got here. That cost me one gold. No, so no, 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 no. And she just keeps like, she just keeps feeling like super sick. And she kind of like does that, you know, that <laughs> like that really. Oh, that's a retching. Yeah. And she's like, I can't stand here. So she like runs to like the nearest bush that she can find. <laughs> Jaren is going to step in at that point and offer the lady one gold and try and escort Severin away. Okay. <laughs> Why uh, am I getting escorted away? Because you're still there. Uh, Rizmir ran away. Um, um, my lady, it was so lovely to meet you. I hope you better luck with your fish. I did have more questions, but apparently my rude companion has th- decided listen, it is time for us to leave. Listen, I had to lose a piece of gold there for you. Will you stop offending the people? I did I just... nothing of the sort. The lady looked irate because someone vomited on her fish. Who vomits on people's fish? Not me. Clearly it was Arisvia. Look, I'm just... And one more thing. I just want to make an observation. We have gone through two towns. This is our third town. The scope and amount and percentage of men has declined the whole time and the percentage of rotten weird fish has increased thank now, you i am very aware of such notings right well i just need to say like what does that mean now man um, do i look like a god do i know the meaning to life don't answer that Ilaria, yes, Ilaria? can i maybe roll nature to try and figure out what it is that's making the fish yep. um, so dodge. Yep. Roll. Yep, the fish seem deeply diseased. Like, there's something, like, a taint something that's really infecting the, all these fish and they, they basically think like they're rotting from the inside out. I think we need to go to Eisenberg as soon as possible. Well, yeah, that is the plan, Ilaria. That is what we're trying to do. So I think we just move along and stop questioning poor fishmongers. Well, have you checked if the horses are okay to go? The man at the horse says he'll be maybe two or three hours, but you should be able to leave before the afternoon's out. Right, right. Okay, that's uh, it's decent. Uh, that's, so that's all right. There, there's an inn here. There's a couple of fishmongering sort of stalls, and that's really about it. Everything else seems to be long deserted or boarded up. This place seems a lot poorer than everywhere else you've been. Yeah, Arismia like walks out from the bushes and she was like, I feel so much better. And then she like wipes her mouth with her hands. I'm sorry that you had to uh, eat breakfast to just throw it up a little bit later. I know I'm feeling very hungry, but I don't want any fish. That's all right. Listen, we've got two or so hours to kill you. I don't know what more information we're going to get about gods and men disappearing but there's definitely something toxic that's affecting these towns uh, down the riverside or whatever so I think the sooner we get to Eisenport the better I totally agree with you I think I need to rest on our way there what can we do Al? what time are we going to leave then as you said you'll be maybe two hours so you've got there's an end there's some fish markets there's a couple of other things you can look at or you can look at the lake or the limestone mine if you want how about a spot of fish? Can I go to the lake, please? I want, I want to check the water out. I want to know... I want to try and figure out whether or not it's poisoned. Okay. All right, I'm going to come with you, Laria. Severin, I am not setting foot into an inn. I said I'm going fishing, but okay. Right, Be afraid right. of all the women in this town. It's fine. I'm, not, I'm just saying. I'm just letting you know an observation. You know, I'm feeling and a little he, bit like, vulnerable. He turns to walk and like whips him with the end of the fishing rod because he's being a pansy. (laughs) Uh, As you do this, you notice that there is a very average looking girl standing outside the inn who as soon as she sees Darren sort of rushes towards him and says, do you you want anything, sir? You know, two two gold, two gold. I'll do anything you want, two gold. (laughs) Wow, they get cheaper and cheaper each time. (laughs) (laughs) She, She tries to smile when you know she's got maybe about two teeth in her head. Um, <laughs> Darren, oh, Darren looks... don't you want to give the lady a good time? It's only the gentlemanly thing to do. And he like walks off at the fishing rod. Thousands of daggers stare in the back of Severin. 
he turns to this average girl and says, Listen, lady, thank you so much for the offer, but I'm wishing you a very fun day, and uh, I might be back a little bit later. All right, thank you. She smiles and says, Well, one gold, I'll do anything, maybe. I, I don't know how long the men have been gone, but it is strikingly and increasingly strange that the women are behaving the way they are behaving. So please excuse me. <laughs> so where are you going I'm just going to follow Severin and Ilaria. Everyone's going to the river, yes? Well, the, the lake. Yeah, the lake. Okay. The lake. So what do you want to do at the lake? Um, Severin I is want going to... to cast a line. Okay. Okay. I'm going to analyze the water. Okay. The water seems thick and quite viscous, and you poke something into the water, and it seems there's like a thick film on top of the water, and there are already some dead fish floating in this water by this point. Oh... I've never That's seen anything weird. like this before. Oh, me neither. As in, I'm you see really a couple of the women sitting around all. fishing, but they seem to be fishing with nets. And when they ping up the nets, they seem to bring up, like, the corpses that are hanging on the water. And then you notice them with knives trying to cut the, the worst-looking, like, diseased bits off the fish before throwing them in a bag. Wow. I don't think we should do anything in this town. I agree. I think we should I mean, not touch anything or go anywhere. We just wait for the horses. Okay, maybe that is a good idea, but we still have two hours to kill. You can, if you really want, we can just sort of spin on and just have you wait the two hours and then take the horse if you want. <laughs> it was too grossed out. <laughs> Darren will awkwardly just wait around. Yeah, Diffs. Yeah, yeah, I think um, is going to do that. Pizza. You sort of wait around the town, hiding from the women who, including the like two-toothed girl who's like, she'd do anything for a gold. <laughs> After having been in this town for about two hours, you feel the desperation of this city. Literally, it seems to be a bunch of fisherwomen squabbling over anything they can get, and you can't wait for the cart to leave. Eventually, mm. the, the horses are ready and the cart leaves and heads past the pin skeleton and off to the road to the north. Have we spoken to the driver at all of this cart? You're not really, no. Do you want to speak to him now? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Ilaria, would you like to say something? You sit next to him every time. No? That's just awkward. Okay. <laughs> uh, Darren will jump in on that awkwardness and go, Excuse me, sir? Yes? Sorry, we, we haven't asked your name, but thank you so much for driving us. What, what, what do you go by? Uh, my name's Julian. Julian. It's, uh... Pleasure to make your acquaintance. Name is Darren. Don't know if you know uh, this party, Arismia, Severin, and Ilar. He sort of shrugs as if like it's not his job to know. Right, I I'm sure you don't need. To, I try not to ask names. I find that people ask me in future, did this man take a ride with you? And I tend not to know. Right, which uh, takes me to my second question, which is no longer a question. You do this journey a lot, right? Well, I, I try to keep my head down and just not think about it but yeah so how the hell do you survive the desperation in each town well i kind of rest my horses and leave and nobody how do you not get attacked by the woman and he's like Sarah's oh that his uh, i'm a eunuch well oh. i'm not actually a eunuch but i tell them i am and they believe me after this mental many months fair enough and he like puts his head back in the carriage a wave of enlightenment comes over darren he goes rot Okay. Darren, I will expose you. That's right. Uh, listen, uh, Julian, thank you so much for your time. Just checking, how long to Eisenport? Oh, about a three hours ride. We should be there by nightfall. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Thank you. So, the cart continues along the road, and after about two or three hours, you come to this very elaborate town that seems to be everything seems to be very well built everything seems to be very nice it's it's like this fountains the women are wearing jewelry and they've got very lots of earrings and gold all over them there everyone is very obviously wealthy mm -hmm. and as the cart pulls into the middle of the town again everything is very well built very well maintained and as you get off the cart you notice that there is the stork and there is the braggart's rest which are the two inns. And there are several other buildings. There's a like a what looks like a jail, which has a very strong pine-like smell coming from it. Pine there, smell. 
yeah, like a sort of piney, woody smell. There's a schoolyard, which lots of kids are running in and out of, but again, they all seem to be female. There's a massive temple, and the, the docks themselves where all the ships are, but near the docks, there's a small, like, artisan market, which has lots of gold jewellery, and in the middle of it, there's this rather gruff-looking ginger dwarf. What do you do? Ah, seems like my kind of town. Darren gives himself a scratch. Good, good. <laughs> Just so you know, it's about <laughs> early evening at the moment. Early evening. Darren turns to Severin and says, No, I wouldn't uh, be amiss to having a chat to that dwarf in the market if anybody's keen. Oh, um, if you were that way inclined, I would have helped you out. All you had to do was ask. It's not about that, Severin. Are you joining It's me? okay. Don't worry. I've got your back. And he, like, walks towards the door. Erismia giggles and then just says, Come on, Darren. Let's go and chat to them. <laughs> well, then I follow both of them. Ilaria <laughs> awkwardly follows behind because she's very confused about the conversation that just happened. So you <laughs> get down to this market. It looks like a single, like... It's like a very fine forge in the middle that makes incredibly intrinsic jewellery, like very small, very delicate jewellery, like engraving and crafting this jewellery. And he doesn't seem to be selling anything. It seems that the women bring him something and then he makes the jewellery from that. But he is working on his own, but there are groups of women around. He seems to sort of like hobble around them with this crutch. And every time you just see him go from one to the other, no, no, that's done wrong, that's done wrong, do it properly, do it properly. And he hobbles back to the other group and again just yells at them, they're doing things wrong. He just seems really angry. And the closer you get to him, you realize his left leg is completely destroyed. It's like, it's, it's there, but it's been like broken and twisted and it doesn't look like it's ever gonna heal properly, if you know what I mean, it looks really badly injured. My dear sir. Yeah. Good to meet you. The name's Severin. It's good to meet you too. I'm Anders. Pardon, I didn't catch that? It's good to meet you too. My name is Anders. Are you... Anders. 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 Yes. (laughs) Sorry, my accent is a little bit thick. It's okay. Anders, I wanted to know, what is it that you're doing here? You seem to be doing something rather oh, I, right. I, I am a goldsmith. And a mighty fine one at that, if I do say so. You look around and every woman, everywhere you've seen since you got to the city, is wearing like like full gold jewellery, like along the arms and down. They can, there's lots of gold here. And he's like, may yeah, I that's, ask where that's you all my work. May, may I ask where you find so much of this resource? Beautiful. Well, the, the ladies bring me the resource and I can work with it. Where do they bring it from? Oh, uh, that's, uh, you'll have to ask them. I don't know. I'm just hired to, to, to craft it. Ah, uh, see, a man of working class. And then, like, he turns it down and he wakes it down. Taking this as his cue, he steps in front of Severin and goes, Oh, right. How's it? But, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, it was, uh, Anders, was it? Hi. Pleasure to meet you, brother. Name's Darren Oak and Folk Pike. Nice to see your goldsmithing. I just can't help but notice that injury you have there. Is it, uh, is it uh, alright to talk about it? Where'd you get it from? I was mauled by a leviathan. What in the world is a leviathan? It's a big sea beast. I lost my axe. It mauled me, took me off the ship, almost devoured my leg. If it hadn't been for others, I would be dead by now. Well, thank goodness for our teams, right? Right? And I just sort of awkwardly slap Severin on the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, unfortunate. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm not sure, Anders, if you have come across any elven folk in this village of Arzenport. Elven folk? Oh, you know, those tall, spindly, uh, humanoid-like uh, people with the pointy ears. I know what an elf is, I'm just not sure why you're asking. Oh, well, we just happen to be looking for a specific elf, one that goes by the name of Dawn Whisper. Never heard of him. Oh, that's, uh, that's a pity. May I say something? Hmm? Do you, by any chance, know where we can find a whole bunch of men, basically? What Arismia means is, passing through the towns to the south of you, 
they have all been rather what's the word manly manly is the word no no like lots spiteful, of men that all the men have come through to eyes and work oh well, where, I, I where are they all that. based I'm, I'm just a craftsman if you want to speak to anyone you want to talk to the matriarch yes the matriarch might be quite useful in respect where can we find them uh he sort of looks at the sort of sky and goes, uh, she might be doing the night prayer in the school or the temple. Ah, uh, that's the giant building over there, yes? That's the temple, I. I thank you for your help, sir, and I look forward to seeing your crafts later on in this day. He sort of nods and goes back to work. And as you sort of turn around to yourself, you hear him go, for fuck's sake, not like that. I told you, not like that. <laughs> Yeah, Severin will walk away without flinching. Yeah, and Rizmi is just going to turn around and walk straight to the temple. Following. Okay. I'm also following. Okay, so are you going into the temple? I do, yeah. yes. Yes. Okay, so you go into the temple. Ahead of you, there are several pews on your left and right, and there seems to be a further set of pews on the far right. Ahead of you, there's lots and lots of candles around a, a mural. There's a couple of people who are bent over in prayer by the by the candles themselves. Severin will light one of his own candles and place it on the display, I guess. Laurie is going to walk up to the front of the, the temple, like um, in front of all the pews, and she's going to cup her hands around her and she's going to shout really loudly. Does anybody know what happened to the men from Pals that migrated to Eisenport for work? <laughs> The two women who Severin, are praying sort of get a bit of a shock and look over and go, but, 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 what? But, 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 who, who are you? Who are you? Please, um, lady, pardon my French. She's she's rather socially awkward. She doesn't know how to respond in in certain situations. I, I we've see. been. Where, where are you from? We've been sent from, and then he clicks his fingers for Darren to say the name of the town. <laughs> Where the hell are we from? <laughs> <laughs> what was the first place we left? Where we met a Florian Dawn Whisper. Dawn Spring. Florian. His name was Florian. I don't know where we were from. So. <laughs> <laughs> Florian. Uh, Florian, okay. Ladies, it doesn't matter where we were from. <laughs> <laughs> what matters is where we have traveled. And we've gone too. And he like, clicks again for, to actually give names now. Uh, we went through Missenden. We definitely went through Missenden, and then uh, Bishop under Puddle before uh, coming through Limestock Bay, where we were the most saddened by the situation. And now we're here. Oh, and you immediately see that the woman behind has noticed that you're both male, and has come over and said, "Oh, you poor dears! Oh dear, have you have you travelled long?" Uh, it's been a couple of days. Yes. Well, you, you need to come rest. Come, we will get you the finest beds we can. Come, come. And she takes you out of the, the fine, like, shepherd you out the temple towards the inn. Yeah, Severin will follow. May I ask what fish? about us? Are you coming? Yeah, Arismia is following. Okay. GM, I just want to ask a question. Is there a normal, like, sex ratio in this? This like, is, is entirely is women. Apart from Anders, there's no Entirely women, men. apart from the, um, the dwarf? Yep. Ah, okay. That said, there are several pregnant women walking around. Like maybe, a, maybe there's like, there's going to be far more than ninety. But say if ninety was the number of women, then about thirty of the women are pregnant. So a third. About a third. So the there is been, only one man. The dwarf's been busy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> My ladies, where are you taking me? The woman takes you into the stork inn the stork and says, inn. Sisters, we have a man! And all of them go, A man! And then they, they sort of fuss over you and they say, We'll give you the finest room we have. Just come with us, come with us, come with us. And they. Never just, allows himself to get pampered. They take you up to one of the, the rooms they have, which is very lavish, a very, like, sort of double bed, single person room. But they basically like put all your stuff down and then they take you back down and then they start like offering you like, what do you want to eat? What would you want to drink? And all that kind of stuff. They completely ladies, ignore. You have to offer. They are completely ignoring. The ladies. The ladies. They, like they're fussing over you, fussing over Darren. 
completely ignoring the ladies. Okay. My ladies, whatever you have to offer, we accept. Uh, Severin, am I far away? Am I in the same room? You're in the same room. You've also been kind of fussed over and given this, like, quite big room. Okay. Kind of, like, looking between bodies that are doing whatever they're doing, Darren will uh, say, Severin, Severin, I, I can't help but make another mathematical observation, but uh, it does seem like there is a very, very distinct lack of... It is apparent, of Darren, you do not need to point out the other... That's what my dad used to call me, Barrett Darren. <laughs> Ladies, <laughs> if you wouldn't mind also partaking in a meal or two for our other two companions. Actually three, the driver is also around. The driver sort of sorting himself, but okay. the, the women sort of, they, it's as if they sort of blink at you and smile, but they don't respond to either of the two women there. They just kind of go, what two women? There's only us. Yes, the, um, in my eyes there are only you, but... And then he takes his plate that he's been given and he, and he like, passes... He doesn't break eye contact with the woman, but he, like, passes it off to Arismia. Arismia oh. takes the plate. What, was, it not, was it not what you wanted? Uh, I'm feeling less hungry and more in wanting to hear your story. Uh, well, first of all, you obviously want a drink, and they sort of go... And you're brought like a crate of this a kind of crate? Weird, weird kind of greeny liquid, and they pour your glass <laughs> and they hand it to you. It stinks of pine, and they go, "It's it Vecina. We make it ourselves. It's it's our holy thing. It's very very nice." Okay, before I partake of this, I'm rather a connoisseur of, of drinks. Please explain to Darren and I, and he like shoots an eye at Ilaria and Mia. How is this made? How is this godly? Please explain. I need to know the whole story before well, I partake. We can't tell you that. It's 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 shrouded in mystery. It's our own thing. We can't tell you that. It's an ancient oh. family history. It's basically it, it's made from pine and it's it's got quite a high alcohol content. It's great. We use it for everything here. Is it like Winterlean? <laughs> 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 kind of. <laughs> <laughs> the Master Oaken Poke Pike is going to just chime up really quickly and say, Excuse me, ladies, do you wouldn't happen to uh, be able to escort us, or at least let us go free, to see the matriarch, would you? Oh, we'll bring the matriarch to you. We'll bring the matriarch to you. It's fine. Just you relax. You've had such a long journey. And one of them starts, okay. like, massaging your shoulders and stuff. Ooh, yes, ah, Severin will accept this. <laughs> uh, Darren um, just looks, like, awkward again. Mm-hmm. He's got he's got his glass in his head, like, waving it lavishly. Basically, Severin looks like one of those Greek gods that get fed grapes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he's you, lapping it up. You take a sip of the Ritzina, it's horrendously strongly alcoholic. Mm-hmm. As in, like, a glass of this and you will be completely smashed. Okay. But uh, so as soon he as you take a sip and put it down, they I keep filling mean, your glass back up. He will sip it slowly, very slowly, and at some points he will pass it, like, again, without breaking contact with the ladies, for Arismia and Ilaria to have a sip if they wanted. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, like, take the glass from him and return it back, like, as if nothing's ever happened. Okay. I have another question. Yep. Can Ilaria use nature again to make some sort of calculation whether one male anything could impregnate that many females at once? <laughs> <laughs> it seems unlikely, but you, you don't know what's going on here, so... Okay. You don't even need to do a roll, it just seems unlikely, but you don't know what's going on here, so... Yes, no, I don't know what's going on, but I wanted to check that. <laughs> <laughs> It's in character to check something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so ladies, uh, just whenever that matriarch is ready, is she coming? Is she on her way? One of them says that she's on her way to see if she's free, but it might be the morning you speak to her. So for the moment, right. rest. You've had a long journey, you must rest tonight. Uh, Darren's going to swizzle the drink in the glass or mug or whatever and smell it and go, uh, I recall that uh, your prison seems to smell a lot like this. Why would that be? Oh, as we said, we use it for everything here. Everything from drinking and celebration to cleaning. It's highly alcoholic. Oh. It kills any form of poison. All right. It kills any form of poison, you say? Yes. Have you poured some in the lakes? Oh, no. We wouldn't waste it by pouring it into the lakes. 
But do you not believe that the lakes that are adjoining, well, that were supposed to be adjoining to the... And he, like, clicks again for Darren to give the name. Sorry, what are you looking for? I don't know what you're looking the for. Lake, the lake town. The lake town. Lake Puddle. Uh, Bishop under Puddle. There was a lake there? There was Lake Puddle? Is that what you're referring no, to? No, the other one. Ah, I don't know what you're talking about. The the last village we were at. The one in Limestone Bay. Limestone. Limestock Bay. Limestock, Limestock Bay. Limestock Bay. That lake seems to be a tad bit poisoned. Do you not think a bottle of this would clear it right up? I've never been there. I've never been out of the city. So, so oh my dear, but out. we shall travel. I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be good for the fish, put it that way. Mm. We tried it as a preservative for fish. The fish were just very, very strong afterwards. Sounds like what? a light up of fish. What else have you tried this on? Oh, we tried in everything. We tried it in all of our sort of natural cooking. That's why everything smells so lovely in trees. And do you feed it to the men? What men? Darren goes quiet. My, my, my dear, we haven't had a man here for, for several months. Where have all the men gone? Oh, they, they go off on ships. To where exactly? Oh, I, I don't know. You'd have to go and look at the port. The port is where all the men go. They don't stay my in our lovely city despite the hospitality we offer. My question, ladies, with such wonderful hospitality, I'm sure men from all the other villages come through to the, to the port, do they not? Well, we've had several men come up, but they've just gone straight onto the boats and left. My question is, is what are they doing on the boats? Well, there's work overseas. You know a lot of these men, they're laborers at heart, and they go where the money is. The money is found a lot of the time overseas. And your charming dwarf, Goldsmith, and he clicks again for his name. Oh, Anders. Darren. Anders, yes. Oh, and Anders told us a regaling tale of how he was attacked by a leviathan. Was this on his journey to the sea? Well, he he was a warrior. We found him. He basically was brought to us by a party who have said he was very wounded, and he showed us what he could do with gold, and our hospitality has kind of kept him here. That is amazing. His workmanship is spectacular. Oh, his workmanship How is How do we get to the fantastic. port from here? Oh, it's just outside. It's a basic this gesture and down past Anders' stall is this very large dockyard. Okay, guys, I think it's time that we head to the port, don't you? Ah, oh, why would we rush with such wonderful company? And he winks at Darren again. Well, I mean, I don't know about the company necessarily, but uh, it is not to rest up and uh, go first thing in the morning. I'm not sure. Do you not believe it's worth a rest and speak to the matriarch before we make our way down to the dock? I thought um, we were seeing the matriarch in the morning. Yes. I'm a little bit confused. So we rest up, see the matriarch in the morning, and then go down to the dock. And he, like, looks at Elleria so that she can understand. Okay, maybe okay. that's a good idea. All right, as long as I'm not but spending the night alone. But I'm not tired. I don't need to rest. Ladies, did you hear? Darren doesn't want to spend the night alone. Oh, I didn't mean it like that. I think we should find him someone to keep company. Oh, the old women can have seem quite interested and then go, wait. Do you mean company is in the... And they sort of all look at each other and some of them start giggling and go, that kind of way. <laughs> I'm not sure. Darren because is that not, kind of way inclined. Because we don't but, do anything with that kind of way until we have rings on our fingers. <gasps> what a whole bunch of... Uh, Darren is more looking for the cuddling kind. <laughs> oh, we don't even do that anymore. The last gentleman who turned up and just wanted to cuddle well, he ended up getting the harsh side of the matriarch's whip. What, and why would the matriarch do that? Well, he um, attempted to deflower Lucille. <gasps> How dare he? Right, the... I'm not getting anywhere near Lucille. I'm going to stay in the Major of Graces. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> good night, ladies. Good night. Good night. Okay, I'm very confused. First, what is that kind of way? And secondly, why does it require a ring? And another question, who is Lucille? And why does she have a flower? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Arisma just laughs and kind of like face palms. Severin basically rouses himself out of his like godly 
tempered state, and he goes, Lara, there are so many things we need to discuss, but I will save the birds and the bees talk for tomorrow morning. Go and get some shut eye in my room. You can sleep with Arismia. I will share the bed with. And he looks and he sighs and he goes, Darren. <laughs> much appreciated, much appreciated. And then yes, Severin addresses me. all the ladies. He's like, my ladies, my ladies. And he wants to see if there's any pregnant women that are surrounding them. There are no pregnant women surrounding you. It's only no the non-pregnant ones. No, I've seen a couple of women who are who are expecting in the town such a wonderful miracle of birth. But I wanted to know, where are the fathers? The fathers? Oh, well, they the must woman... have left on the ships as well. As we've said, men don't tend to stay around here. So the children will grow up fatherless? Oh no, they will grow up as part of our loving commune. We have several women. We all chip in and we all uh, raise the children together. As they say, it takes a village. Mm. I mean, you can see that at our school tomorrow if you wish to go past. Oh, I would love that. Right. Yes. So yes, what now? <laughs> good night, good night, good night. And Darren's going to try and usher them all out. Everyone is like blowing air rub. kisses as he leaves. So you all adjourn for the night? Yeah. Yep. Next morning you are woken yeah. quite early by the sound of a bell ringing. And it's the sound like of a church bell. Mm. Okay. And as you sort of look out one of the windows, you hear the sound of... It's like people speaking in unison. It's quite a young, high-pitched voice. So you're assuming women and children speaking. And it comes from the school. Can we hear what they're saying? Uh, roll to see what you can hear. Severin Ooh. definitely yeah. hears a chunk of it. Basically, what you hear is... Since you come halfway through it, you hear the sort of chant of bless our days with your glory and deliver us from the great cold one cast us not into the deep below but bring us to your side beyond the waves blessed be uh, what, what is the temperature like in this town <laughs> this morning it's about normal it's you know average for time of year you're okay. probably getting into about what the equivalent of about October would be in the northern hemisphere yeah no, I keep forgetting, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, cool. So, so slightly sort of like chilly. getting into sort of like like a warmish, but beginning to get colder. Prime oh, oh. Uh Severin will relay everything that he's heard to Darren. What do you suppose it means? Well, uh, maybe that answers the gods' question uh, you were asking. But uh, I, I just must tell you, I, I don't much like cold. Well, who's a fan of the cold? I don't know, polar bears, maybe? Maybe it has something to do with the water. What, the cold? Ilaria, can you hear us from the other room? <laughs> oh, shit, I forgot. I forgot. What to look God, out. the privacy in this place is just These, The walls are so thin. For some reason, I thought we were in the same room. I do apologize. I take that back. Let me it's fine. That I'm whispering to you through a wall now. You might as well come here. Yeah, Arismia <laughs> drags Laria <laughs> to the uh, to Severin and Darren's room. Good morning, ladies. I trust you slept well. Yes, yes. But uh, we were woken up by these children. They were just talking and talking and chanting so many just unnecessary things. Do you know what it means? I don't no, know what it means. But we can go find out. I think that's a very good idea. Look, we need to get started. We need to go to the port. We need to speak to the matron or whoever we need to speak to. We have to get going. I think the matriarch might be a little bit insulted if you call her a matron. Listen, matron, matriarch, I don't care. We're here to find the boy. Let's just find him and let's go home. So as they are aware you're awake, you get sort of bustled downstairs and you get fed. Well, the two males get fed with a plentiful supply of food. Again. Uh, the two, the two uh, women again get completely ignored. Yeah, again, Severin will move his plate again without breaking eye contact with the woman as if it's not completely ha- as if it's not happening. Moves the plate to the woman for them to share and he will share with Darren. Basically sure. picking every now but and then. you need your strength. Ah, uh, ladies, I am strength of plenty. A couple of them giggle at that. <laughs> Darren will just give thanks for the meal and exit. Okay. Arismia will follow. Do we know where the matriarch is? Well, I'm sure these fine ladies will be able to show us. And he, like, winks at them. Aren't we heading to the school? 
Is Aren't you outside? Should? So you're outside now. Is there anything you want to do? Ladies, please lead the way. We would love to meet the matriarch of the town. Okay, so they take you up towards this. There's a school to the side, which again seems to be entirely populated by young girls of various ages who seem to be learning passages about... They seem to be talking a lot about something called She Who Waits Beyond the Waves. She Who Waits Beyond the Waves. Mm -hmm. What do you suppose that means? Um, I think maybe we should ask them. Okay. Can you just... It sounds like it's under the water. Well, thank you, Captain Obvious. What if it is that thing that attacked that man? Let us Uh, not make assumptions, because you make an ass of you and me. Well, I mean, it does seem like a logical explanation, don't you think? I think we should meet the matriarch and ask her... I heard someone... ...on the situation. And someone once said causation is not correlation, but I'm with you, Arismia. Thank you, Darren. How come there aren't any boys in school? Maybe it's an all-girls school. It's not a co-ed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Severin chuckles and just and is asking the ladies questions about their lives. Okay. What, what do you want to ask? My ladies, uh, with a town filled with so many women, what is your day-to-day life? Tell me, tell me a day in the life of you. Oh, we clean. We clean the temple. We worship at the temple. We got the fish that come in from the docks. There's a lot of fish come in every single day. And is the fish healthy? Fish are very healthy. And she o- offers you one, basically just gestures to the sum that they are preparing for the children. The fish look incredibly healthy, like very big, lots of good thick meat on them. They look amazing. This is a bit strange. Yes, almost too amazing. Excuse me, ladies, are you aware that uh, the fish just in the neighboring town, some two hours court ride south, the fish are terribly sick that side. Oh no, what happened to their fish? Oh, that's sort of what we're kind of trying to find out, but really we're actually just looking. It is possibly connected to what we are actually trying to do, which is find someone, but it's possible that if we figure out why the fish are sick, we could be onto something yet. Well, maybe you should study those fish. Maybe they'll help them. I mean, we could send them some fish from here, but the last time we went to that village, we were basically chased away with sticks. That is rude and unnecessary. Listen, I I can't help but want to ask one question. Where are all the men? Oh, they're, they're away on ships. So the people keep telling us. Can you tell us what they're doing on the ships? Well, what, what do men do on ships? They are, they are laborers. They're probably a way off to build some foreign land or, or do some work there. I mean, so far they're very strong men. I mean, they must be in demand everywhere. I mean, they were in demand here while they were here. Darren turns to Severin and says, Look, can't we just uh, tell Mr. Florite's wife being that his son is on a ship somewhere? I'm pretty sure that's not going to be the answer he's hoping for. Wouldn't that be lying? Well, I'm not sure because I don't know what the truth is. Hilaria does have a point. I just think that something is fishy. (laughs) And I mean, mind the pun, but something is very fishy here. All right, I think we need to talk to the matriarch. I think that's a very good idea. The girls tell you that the matriarch is down at the docks. Will you please take us there after you've shown us the school? So you get shown around the school, you get shown that there are lots of, as I said, young girls learning about the, about the religion of the land. And then you get taken down to the docks. And the docks, there are about 15, 20 fishing boats, very small fishing boats, but they are laden with fish. Like, more fish than you've ever seen being taken off. And yeah, unlike previous fishing towns you've been in where, you know, the fish lie on the dock and they stink already, they fish don't even seem to have that. It's like they're so, so fresh that they don't smell yet. And you just see groups of women just taking the fish and gutting them and taking the meat off them as they wait. And the matriarch herself seems to be standing like halfway up the dock, like sort of, and kneeled in prayer, blessing the the dock itself. Severin will go after her and kneel next to her in silence. Okay. Darren will lean over towards Ilaria and whisper, Do you suppose they are uh, serving the saint? What's his face, uh, Randolph? Maybe. I mean, this fish looks amazing. 
I'm pretty sure that Randolph would overeat himself to death fish like this. That's a good point. Maybe that's why they got rid of him. I thought he died trying to walk up a mountain. I meant, I meant him and all the men, you know, all the hymns. Ah, do you think it has something to do with the birds and the bees? I mean, Severin did say that in the morning was a great time to talk about the birds and the bees. I actually know what that means. Darren will just stand nearby Severin, I guess. Yes, Darren, tell Larry about the birds and... Are we sure that's the matriarch? Pretty sure. Darren's going to look awkwardly at Ilaria and then kneel down next to Severin. Okay, Ilaria is going to walk up to the matriarch, tap her on the shoulder and say, Excuse me, madam, could you please tell me about the birds and the bees? The matriarch rises and turns to face you. She's got more gold on her tire arms than anyone else so far. She's even got like a sort of like ring that lasts from the top of her middle finger all the way down to like her almost her elbow that's how much gold is covering her arms and she goes my child my child you wish to know about the birds and the bees well that's how procreation starts but that's a filthy word we don't talk about it here yet i see some of your women have been blessed with the birds and the bees their fruits she looks at you kneeling next to her and she goes well, you know, filthy men do come to our town and impregnate when they should just accept that women can say no. But that's why I tell all my girls now they're not allowed to do anything with a man that involves anything more than shaking his hand without a ring on their finger. Wise words, wise one. Oh my gosh, so you need a ring to shake hands? My dear. Humans are so interesting. If you don't have a ring on your finger, it doesn't show commitment, and commitment is what we need. I mean, your young dwarf friend there, I mean, if he wishes to marry one of my girls, he would need to put a ring on her finger. I couldn't just allow him to copulate freely. I mean, what would the people say? Right. Can we just get to the point now, please? Please, can you tell us something? Where are all the men gone? Oh, the men, yes. The men, yeah. The men, they're, they're all the way on ships, I'm afraid. We build them here. We get a demand every couple of months to build a large ship, and then we hire the men. They come, they build the ship, and then they leave on the ship with the men. The offer of Do gold you know? is too much and too tempting to not take it. Even with married spouses left behind? Some men have a price, I'm afraid. Seems that all men have a price. Well, uh, it's... You know, as as a woman myself, you know, we would never forsake our children, but men are free-spirited creatures. They're not tied to the apron strings as we are, my dear. True. As a son of a very strong woman and an absent father, I'm aware of that, that situation, and I agree wholeheartedly. My question is, is, we have been sent to your beautiful town, passing by villages that have been stricken with ill fish and disease. It appears that the men from all the towns, your price has been so high it's taken even from the few towns over. Well, when we, we did say that when we offer to build a ship, the, the person who usually offers to pay is very, very handsomely rich. He will offer a lot of gold. And as I said, all men have a price. And what is her name? Whose name? The woman who offered to... To build the ships? Oh, I can't disclose that. That's private information. I simply ask for interest sake of wanting to go into a business partnership with which is ah, rather difficult to Well, if you wait around you here with. long enough, I'm sure that she will spawn. Is she the god that you worship? No, no. We worship she who waits beyond the waves. She turns to Alaria. She cares for you, my dear, and she strokes her face. What is she waiting for? And she cares for you, and she strokes Charisma's face. And she cares for all the ladies of the world. She's very caring and very loving. A mother, if you were. Okay, yes, that's wonderful. Sorry, a mother to only woman? Well, you know, men are free-spirited. Women are tied to this apron string. We are, we are the weaker race. We need a mother figure. Yes, and you have provided that very well. 
along with your woman who wait, one who waits beyond the waves. What does this mother figure look like exactly? Have you seen her before? Oh, she's beautiful. She's she almost has wings of pure gold. She's a very, very wealthy, beautiful woman. Is this where you get the gold from, Jibu? She sort of flicks her hair back in this almost cascade of gold like pours down her neck of just this like very fine netted gold jewelry. And does she live in the sea? Well, we, she doesn't she live in the sea, but when we die, we go to become with her, at her side, in the sea. In the sea? Well, you know, the, the bodies are taken out to sea and left, and they don't come back and wash upon the shore. They are taken by she who waits beyond the waves. What bodies are you talking about exactly? When we become old, my child, for everyone knows that mortality is only short time. Can we see this god of yours? You can see her in every smiling child that's here. Look at that child there. Her face is lit up with childish glee that reflects the love of our god. Matriarch, I have a difficult question. Yes, my child? Why is it that the Limestock village finds your god sacrilegious? Oh, it's a sad, sad tale. One of my girls... She went there and she thought that she would spread the word of she who waits beyond the waves, but these Philistine women, they they would not listen. They killed her. They tied her up and then hung her by the neck, and they called it a tribute. Ever since then, our god has looked foully on them, and I hear that their fish and land have become diseased and that's only strengthened my resolve that we do worship the correct god. It is not only them that has become that foul fate. There are two other villages who have actually affected. The bishop have grown ill and oh, the bishop, mutated. The bishop under Puddle, the land of fake saints. They fake worship saints. this fatooned old thing that failed to get up a mountain once because he ate himself too thin. They are not worth worshipping, and we offer to assist them and make them part of our beautiful world, but they would not listen. Their fate is their own. They are not suffering those consequences. At this we, point... We, we seek a, an elven boy, actually. We have been sent by his father four, four villages to the south. The name escapes me, and and the dwarf is useless. And <laughs> well, I'm afraid, if it, I'm afraid you don't have a name, then I can't really help you. The name is, and he starts clicking for for Darren to remember. Darren is going to rise up off his knees, pump his arms twice in a similar fashion to Beyonce. Single <laughs> ladies moment, okay. and turn to you and say. It is Dawn Whisper. Yes, Dawn, Dawn Springs. Dawn Whisper. Son. No, I think I would remember such a flashy name as that. I've never come across. He's an elven, an elven man that we were told we came to Eisenport to to do work and has lost contact. Apparently, he came about several months ago and, and has lost contact for a couple oh, of weeks. My dear, I've never heard of such man. And if I had, I, I, he'd left little, if any, impression upon me. This is unfortunate. We were sent to find out his his fate, whether he had found one of your women and married, or decided it's, to live a life if of he'd adventure, been married, or he passed away. Still, well, if he'd been married, he's long since deserted my girl. Because there are no men here. They all left upon the last ship. Do you know where their last ship was supposed to go? All I know is it journeys into the sea. We never see it again. Seems to be the case. Is it possible to follow in their tracks? With one of your boats, of course. Well, uh, I suppose if you are devout and believe in she who waits beyond the waves, then anything is indeed possible. I would like to try. Uh, Severin, are you suggesting we go out to the sea to meet she who waits beyond the waves? I thought she was waiting for us to die. So that we could go with her beyond the waves. Who is yeah, this so did I. The waves? Who is this her you speak of? 
She who waits beneath the waves. That whole explanation. Dear, dear. Wait, she who right. waits beyond the waves. Beyond. She's not waiting beneath beyond. the waves. That's the great cold one. You do ah. not want to get him. He comes. Who is the, the great cold one? The great cold one is the one who comes in the night and takes naughty children away down to the cold depths beneath the sea, where you never see the sun ever again, and you have to spend your entire existence in darkness. I am no such stranger to darkness. Oh, I, I but think what constitutes a naughty child? There are certain severities. Uh, disobeys the rules we have here. Anyone who is found to be maltreating or ignorant or horrible to their, their fellow girl is taken away by the great cold one. Severin, is it possible that uh, this Dawn Whispers kid was mean to his wife or his chick or something and has possibly been sent to the waves beneath I, or beyond? I do not know, Darren. I believe us taking a boat is the only way to find out. All right, Miss Matriarch, thank you so much. Uh, is it possible for you to give us a boat? Please. Don't you say? Well, the there are many, many fishing boats here. I mean, you could speak to one of the girls. Maybe they'll offer you one. But as far as a boat, I, I don't have any I could lend you. But as I said, the, the girls are very offering. And I'm sure they would charge you a minimal price. Darren scratches. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Matriarch. May, may I call you by a different name or do you only go by I, Matriarch? I had a name once, but I have been the Matriarch for several years now and it is an honor to be called such i do not wish to be called another name then matriarch you shall be called thank you for your aid and if you have anything else to tell us please do not hesitate thank you my child if you should need me i will be at the temple and she walks past you toward uh, back off towards the temple severin pushes darren towards the nearest woman of the boat oh, 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 just wait Right, can we just, can we have a huddle real quick? Severed size. Wait, don't you need a ring to huddle? Oh, I'm, I'm sure we don't need a ring to huddle, but we can make a ring, whatever. Listen, what the hell are we doing? Yeah, can we just have a game plan? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure the game plan was pretty straightforward. Well, I feel like we've just ping-ponged from town to town to town to town and now we're going to get on a ship and I mean, I'm not a fan of oceans, but I don't mind them. It's just, we're going out to sea seems a bit, a bit extensive for 300 gold. I'm not going to lie to you. I completely agree with you because at this point, I am not wanting to go onto a ship and I do not want to be taken by the sea monster or whatever it is this lady was talking about because I am too young to die. Oh my gosh, what do you mean we could die? Okay, I'm not going anywhere near the sea. If we're going to die, I'm anywhere near Aria, we are not going to die, relax. Arismia is being dramatic. We are simply going out into the ocean to try and meet the goddess to see if she has seen the ships and is able to answer our questions. Right, now, I'm not, not much to of a... follow the ships in their path. Okay, well, let's. All right, fine. I just, I'm not a religious man or dwarf, but how the hell do you call a god? We're not just going to sail out into the sea and, and just swim a whistle for someone. Well, we will have two women with us, and surely we will not suffer an ill fate if the one who lives beyond the waves is protecting her females. All right, well, then, fine. Okay, good. Thank you. Huddle break. And <laughs> everyone pushes them towards the nearest woman. Introduce yourself. Oh, <laughs> uh, hello, madam. Yes. Uh, is this your boat? No, this is my hand. I'm standing in my boat. Oh, <laughs> how big is this boat? Can I see? It's it's your standard fishing boat. It would hold maybe about eight people, a real push, but it's not very big. It's, it's like bigger than a rowboat, but not much. I see. Madam, I don't suppose you would do us the courtesy and great favour of taking us out to sea for a brief moment. What for? Oh, we just would like to pay our respects to she who waits beyond the waves. Well, the temple's up there. Uh, apparently this is a very special desire, need, a religious experience that we need to be on the ocean for. She looks at you incredibly blankly and just blinks and then goes, what exactly are you wanting to do? We are wanting to follow in the path of those that have sing. She just stares at you, just like, what? 
But we look for boats before. We would like to follow them. We have a we have a mission to find but, out one of the boats who was sent through the but, way. But, but they are full galleons. They are far bigger than my boat. I believe that the ocean will take us where we need to be. There are no other like bigger boats in this port, are there? No, this is the, the, the older boats are about the size of uh, fishing boats. All right, okay, cool. Uh, well, then in that case, listen, if you can't afford to take us out, perhaps we could just borrow your boat for a small fee. She again sort of blinks and then looks at you and says, So you want to take my boat out to sea? It's sort of like a rental, yeah. The matriarch did suggest that you would be obliging. Well, I... I guess if the matriarch says it's okay, then I guess it's okay. It will cost you 50 gold, though. Darren has 48 gold left. Um, Darren, I'm going to murder you. <laughs> so wait, Darren has 48. Yeah. Is that what you said? So I'm just going to give you two gold pieces. <laughs> to make uh, the 50. My lady, thank you very much. Uh, here is your 50 gold. Okay. She takes the bag of gold off you, stands out of her boat and gestures and says, I guess, um, take care of it, it's done me very well, and begins walking up the dock towards the town. I look at to Severin and I go, I think we just bought a boat. Rented. That is very true, but now tell me something, who knows how to actually drive the boat or... <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, you I'm a third hand at, at uh, dungeoneering. I'm pretty skilled in dungeoneering. I'm sure it's not uh, really all that different. Okay, well, I was just checking. I'm pretty sure Lara knows a thing or two. About boats? Oh, no. No, no. Trees. I know a lot about trees. Trees and um, water and um, leaves and tracking animals. So, so, and technically, this is technically a tree on water. Oh, and arrows. I know a lot about arrows and the type of feathers <laughs> that you should use to make the best arrows. Severin, oh my God. <laughs> I think we are overreaching and I feel like we have just spent gold unnecessarily if we can't drive this thing. <laughs> Severin goes, how hard can it be? And he stands, is it like, an, is it like a rowboat? Is it a... It's about, as I said, it's a, kind of like a sort of bigger rowboat. Not much bigger, but... Bigger enough, bigger enough. Okay. He sits at an oar, a paddle, an oar, a paddle, a paddle. Yeah, it'll be an oar. An oar, and well, are you going to join me or not? Right, right, of course, yeah, 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 yeah. And Darren sits down at another one, I guess. Yeah, Arismia gets in and sits down, and she kind of just prays that she's gonna be alive. <laughs> okay. Is she praying out loud? She is definitely praying out loud. Do you specifically use words like, I do not want to die? Yes. Okay, Lara starts <laughs> having a panic attack. Darren will start paddling really quickly. <laughs> Severin will as well. Yeah, Arismia is just gonna like tap you on the back and be like, well, at least if we die, we die together. Then she just like starts paddling as well. But, but I don't want to die. Well, and I guess it's not up to you. I'm like rowing like really hard while I'm busy having a panic attack <laughs> about impending doom and, and death and how hard uh, it is that I'm going to so die. You start, you start going in circles. Severin you're rowing has, really hard. Laria, really just row. If you don't, your breathing will become erratic. It'll help calm you. Okay, I row, but like really hard. We row really hard to compensate. Okay, so you row for a couple of minutes till you, you're quite far off the shore at the moment. What do you do? Seven motions to Arismia to address the lady beyond the. Okay. Why must I do everything? Oh my goodness! And then she's like, "Lady, lady beyond the water, beneath the water, above the water, whatever you are." <laughs> Please come this to us. So respectful. Please come to us and save us and help us and please can we just find this little boy? This is taking up a lot of our time. And then like <laughs> she just like kind of puts her hands in her like her head in her hands and she's like like just like muttering to herself, I don't understand. I don't understand why I came on this trip. It's just too much. It's too much. We are gonna die. And if we die, then, then we're gonna go beyond. 
underneath the water and then what happens underneath the water then I'm not going to breathe and then she just keeps like going on and going on and going on and hyperventilating and then yeah okay but yeah Ilaria burst into tears because now she's she's convinced that we're going to die roll <laughs> to see how your prayer works me right yep okay what am I rolling for just natural do a d20 roll okay cool Wow. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. The sky begins to grow dark and you notice some sort of whirlpool begin to appear nearby. Severance so went to pray really quickly. <laughs> Guys, do you see what I'm seeing? I am well aware. So we are going to die? <laughs> oh my god, we're going to die. Right. So who do we blame for this? It's Severin because Severin told us that we need to get onto the boat and now we are all going to die. And now when we die, Severin, I am going to get you in hell. I'm just telling you now, I am going to kill you even after you are dead. And she's Severin, like, is, like, Severin is laughing. It's like, lady, we are on this. Take me, I am your willing participant. Okay. Ilaria is crying like a little girl. Severin's yeah. just going to continue rowing. <laughs> <laughs> just going round in circles as you get dragged towards the whirlpool. So I'm feeling <laughs> ill, Darren. Stop. <laughs> so you get dragged towards this whirlpool, and you begin to start circling the whirlpool. Is anyone doing anything while you're circling the whirlpool? No, he's this got is the end. His arms out stretched, and it's like, yes, this is a god taking me. <laughs> Arismia is she's still shouting at Severin. But she's rowing, and she, but she's like shouting at her, at her um, at Severin, and she's like, "I'm still going to kill you. I'm just telling you now. If I die, I will kill you." But she's like rowing and rowing and rowing, hopefully, <laughs> like you know, trying to still save okay. everyone. I have a question. We are pretty far out to sea. There's nothing around us. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. You can see the um, land. Like it's in the distance. It's not too far away, but it's not like so close enough you can swim to it. Okay. So, what Ilaria is doing while she's trying is inspecting the inside of the boat to find sort of like the most solid piece of wood and then she's going to drive an arrow into it and sort of attach some rope to it, to the arrow. She wants to basically secure herself to a piece of wood. Fair enough. So, you secure yourself to the wood as you get close rock and closer and closer to the whirlpool and then everything starts spinning and then everything goes black are we dead <laughs> <laughs> the, the two girls both wake up and you are in cages and you are basically you're in the middle of this like an altar room Okay. And you have been, you're left in these two cages off to the side. However, Severin and Darren have been stripped naked and tied to the, one of these wheels. There's like several wheels where there's like sections for people to be tied on. And as you wake okay. up and look around, you see that there are about 50, 60 men all tied to these wheels as well. And all around you, basically standing in what look like some sort of cult regalia, there seem to be women all holding torches. The matriarch is standing at the top in front of what looks like a very large aqueduct in the middle of the room. Ah, so this is where you kept all men. So What are they chanting? They are, they aren't chanting anything, they're just staring at you. They're just staring, okay. Well, this and is it's the intense. Is it the same matriarch that we were talking to? Yes. Oh, lovely. I just want everybody to know that you will not force me into any kind of procreation, no matter how much you force me. <laughs> <laughs> and Severin just nods and he's like, it's a legit request. So, basically the matriarch seems to sort of raise her arms and all the women turn to face her. And the matriarch seems to speak, saying, ladies, ladies, it is time. And she sort of puts her arms out and you hear a gong sound behind her. Time for what? The matriarch speaks, saying, May the mother bless you. And all the women around the room reply with, And bless us all. May we raise our faces to hers. 
that she may look upon our hearts. We praise her name. We bless her name forever. The matriarch sort of lowers her hands and sort of clasps them together and says, Ladies, on this night, great mother who waits beyond the waves, we petition you with humble yet hopeful hearts. We bring before you these gifts offered by your daughters on the shore. Grant us peace, guard and govern us, bless us with your glory, that we may be faithful and bring forth your image to the land. Hold within your hands those who have passed beyond the seas, that they may greet us as we greet you on the water in our final days with shining eyes and open arms. We pray you accept our humble offering of thanks, guide our days in peace and prosperity, and protect us from the great cold one who seeks to taint your daughters and drag them down to the deep below, far from your eyes. Count us among the chosen and bless our meager gifts, approve them, cleanse them as we return their spirits to the sea. Scorn not the lesser sect, but turn your kindly countenance upon them, and grant that they be able to accept your power, to walk by your side on the day you rise from the shore. To the mother we pray, to the mother we come, to the mother they fall. And you see right at the end one of the wheels, one of the men being unstrapped from the wheel and dragged to the altar in front of the matriarch. Okay. Am I allowed to do something? Yep. So while this whole whatever, the that all turn to face the matriarch, mm -hmm. is the cage locked? It is, yes. Can I use my dagger to get out of it? You can try, yes, roll. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Natural one, your dagger snaps in the lock. At this point, the man has been brought before and sort of kneeling before the matriarch. He looks incredibly drunk and she looks down upon him and says, To the mother we pray. And all the girls around say, To the mother they fall. And she kicks him in the chest into the pool in front of her. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. And this is some creepy voodoo stuff going on here. And she puts her hands out and says, Ladies, ladies, take those you have taken and do as I have done. And oh you notice a lot of women going forward, unhooking men, very, very, very drunk men from the wheel and dragging them to the edge of the pit before repeating, to the mother we pray, to the mother they fall, and kicking them in the chest into the pit. Okay, how about this? Can I play a really high-pitched, crazy-ass tune on my flute? Interfere with this kind of trance-like thing that is going on right now. You can try, yes, bro. Bro, well. What do you mean? It's a dice spot, man. It's not even me. Like, if it was actually rolling, it would be better. <laughs> the dice spot listened. So, you do a high-pitched noise. A couple of the girls look over to you and one of the men tries to break free and start running but he is as i said completely intoxicated so he seems to stagger and doesn't get very far before he's recaptured i'm assuming they've all been put to drink the pine liquid yeah basically you look around and there seems to be lots and lots of empty bottles of Rossini lying around so it looks like they have had that poured down their throat and we definitely haven't you haven't no all right but i think you were unconscious when the thing started do we still have our weapons on us? You and Dara no, are both actually, stripped, stripped completely naked. naked. But we have our weapons, right? So they haven't seemed to have taken any of the gear of the two girls, no. Okay. Yes! Can I throw... Be careful where you throw that woman! Yeah, <laughs> so I want to slide it. Um, so I have two martial weapons. I don't know what they are. <laughs> You don't know what they are, that's interesting. I think martial weapons is typically like a sword, shield, axes. Something okay, like that. so can I please... Okay, well, I do have two hand axes. Can I please throw both my hand axes, axes oh to... Um, oh, what are your names again? To Darren and... No, just to Darren. It's just Darren. Don't throw it to me. <laughs> they are tied to a wheel at the moment, but 
Yeah, I don't know. This, is, this is a terrible circus game that can only end badly. <laughs> it probably could. Throw it at Darren. Okay, roll to throw them. Try. Um, okay, so, okay, let me rather throw a hammer and not an axe. I'm gonna throw <laughs> a hammer. <laughs> Why? Why is that a better okay. idea? Roll a hammer. Why is it roll a hammer. Throw like a hammer at Darren. Oh my god. Just yeah, I'm gonna it. try and... Okay. So, rolling to throw a hammer at Darren. <laughs> Can only uh, end well. At least this one doesn't chop your hand off. Okay, everybody pray. Oh, well. So, no. you <laughs> smack him straight in the stomach. <laughs> Oh, there's like a big, there's or, an obvious bruise already starting from hitting him, and he starts okay. reaching. Listen, I'm just trying to save your life, okay? Okay, would it be possible for Severin to take his tail and reach down to get the hammer? You can try, yes. Now, as you do this, you notice the, the water that the men have been kicked into start to bubble. Oh my gosh. You managed okay. to pick up the hammer with your tail? Okay, I would it? like to. I'm assuming, are we tied by ropes or manacles? Uh, let's go with rope. Rope, damn it. If only there were manacles. Okay, How can tight? I throw flint? <laughs> what flint? <laughs> what? Flint, flint and tinder. What flint? Stop tinder throwing is? things at <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. Guys, I'm oh trying God. to save you. <laughs> no. Oh my uh, God. Tinder tends to be like a block and a block, so it might be better. It's like matches. <laughs> oh shit! I thought it was like. <laughs> it's like old school matches, woman. How? Yeah, I was gonna try and like make you burn the rope. Sure, but I'm attached to it at the moment. How can Darren like? How tight does it feel? Could he wiggle out of the ropes? Could he like pull at them and try to loosen them somewhat? Roll to see if you can do that. Since you're sober, you might have a chance to do it. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Well, let's see. Yes, you manage to basically wiggle your way out, and with the distraction of the man being recaptured, you've got, let's say, two turns to do, to try and free yourself and Severin before they notice you again. All right, I immediately try to do that. Okay, roll to try and um, free Severin. Oh, roll to try free Severin. Yep. So the two yes. of you are now free of the wheel. I now have a hammer. And you have a hammer, but you are standing in a room with about 200 women. I have so... a tail with a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to run up. Can I see the cage? I'm assuming I saw where I got hit in the stomach by a hammer. There's basically a couple of small alcoves you could run to for now. I want to run directly towards the cage that Arismia and... Yeah. Okay, you, you run towards the Hilaria. cage. Because the two of you weren't captured by other women, so... you notice that they don't really seem to notice that you aren't there anymore. I want to take out my bow and aim an arrow at the back of the matriarch. Sure. Ooh. Damn. Yep, you Ooh. shoot. Yeah, yeah. It goes straight into the back of the matriarch. The matriarch ah! turns round and puts her arms and says, My sisters, it is time. I knew it was coming. It is time to choose a new matriarch. And she falls into the pool. <gasps> Lovely. But it never ends. We have to kill like all 200 of them. Darren is frantically trying to free these two from their cage. At this point, you notice the last of the men have been kicked in and the bubbling of the pool was getting more and more ferocious. All um, 60 men have been kicked in? Yep. Oh, okay. Do we notice anyone that looked like Tim's father? Anyone that looked like an elf boy? All basically you noticed was that there was a bunch of very drunk naked men getting dragged forward, <laughs> put in front of these women who kick them into a pit. Well, I guess we can assume what that elf <laughs> happened to him. Can we see anything coming, like anything in the water? As you sort of sit and watch the water bubbling, again you hear the sound of the gong being rung and one of the women walks up to the top of the thing as in she's assuming control and says, Ladies, it is time. And all the women drop their robes and lay down on the ground. They are all completely naked. From the pool comes forth. You first of all start seeing like a very sleek, like greyish head. Mm. And then these eyes with the sort of white that shoots back to reveal pitch black pupils and it rises slowly out. After three or four minutes of this rising, you eventually just look in front of you and you see this... How do I describe it? Leviathan. Uh, no, it's like the, 
that the face mm -hmm. and the eyes have got small, dark like teeth, many, many rows of teeth, very thick lips with this white membrane. It's basically mm -hmm. fish men. Oh. They rise yeah. from from the bubbling pool and begin to start, let's say, conjugating the visit with the ladies. Uh, oh, ew. Okay, Severin's seen enough. He's well grossed out. He's going to help try and free the woman, and they just want to get out of there. Well, he just wants to get out of there. <laughs> so currently there's yeah. about 200 women and then 200 fish men. I'm going to say frog. Well, they're getting one. conjugated with each other. Come on. <laughs> Quickly, get out! Get out of the cage, man! Get out! Oh Arismia is going to take her axe and axe the cage mm -hmm. to try and <laughs> free herself, um, Alaria. Okay. Do we free ourselves? I roll to see if how your axe works, just smacking it off the side of the cage. Can Severin help with the hammer? Yep. Do I need to roll as well? Uh, yes. <laughs> Come on. Uh, I do not yeah. help with the hammer. You know what, yeah, you, you break through the lock and you push through it, you manage to get out. At this point, Severin and Darren are still completely naked, but yes. Proper shock. This is pretty gross. <laughs> Would you mind lending me a cloak or something, please? Yeah, All I right. take off my, my scarf and I give it... <laughs> he, he ties it, he ties it like a sarong and he's like, let's get Does Darren see like where our stuff was put? Like could we find our things? Uh, there's nothing around that thinks you could be anywhere near here. Right. But as you sort of notice the stairwell out mm -hmm. and you run, to, I imagine you run towards the stairwell out. Yeah, if we can't find our things. You, um... you sort of burst out of a door and in front of you, there seems to be like a giant like pile of stuff. It seems to be like basically someone's looking through and deciding how much anything's worth before mm. packing it onto the cart to be sent back to the main town. And you see your driver sort of standing there, sort of like trying to mind his own business while the cart's being loaded up. Uh oh. I, I push the others forward. I'm naked. Uh, Put some gloves on, man. <laughs> I grab like the first thing that I can see that kind of looks like it could cover some bits of him and I just throw it to him, <laughs> to Darren. Okay. Roll to see how bad this is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. A thong. <laughs> yeah, oh, you find a, a very small dwarven thong. <laughs> <laughs> so. On it goes. Yep. So you're basically standing. There are two women looking through the gear. And then there is the cart right next to it. What are you going to do? Hmm. Are there any weapons on this cart? Is there, there like... All, all the bunch of stuff that's in front of you is literally everything that's been taken off the men that were there. Okay, so whatever weapons I can find, I'm just going to give it to both the men. So your stuff will be there, it's just you need to dig for it. Yeah. I'm going to look for my shovel, or a shovel, as soon as possible. Severin <laughs> wants to find a, a padlock and key and try and lock the door behind them. If there was a door? There was a door. It doesn't really have anywhere you could attach a padlock to. You could probably jam the door shut, though. Yeah, he'll do that with the spear. Okay. So look, Ilaria is pretty freaked the fuck out. You said there were two other women there, right? Uh, there are two women who are... They're both very heavily pregnant, and they're looking through the bags of, the sort of piles of stuff. Very absently, she, as in they're not really paying attention to you. She is going to take out her bow and shoot them. Okay. Oh, okay. Severin's gonna try and tie them with a rope as soon as she's shot. Okay. Roll to shoot them. Yep, you shoot one through the neck. It collapses to the ground in a pool of blood. The other looks at you with a sort of shocked expression. And you easily tie her up. Awesome. She starts shrieking intruders and intruders. He shoves in fairness, a spoon the, in her mouth. The streets are incredibly <laughs> quiet for uh, some unknown reason at the moment. If I have found a shovel, have I found a shovel? You have found a shovel. I will run up and just beat one over the head. The one is making the noise. <laughs> Roll. Eek. You, you, ah. you sort of bang her on the head and she just looks at you as if to say, is that the best you've got? Oh my God. And Arismia hits her over the head like, what, as what? well. If you want, I'll hand her the shovel. If you look at me, I will just give you the shovel. Hand, hand her the shovel. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you're like, bang! And she again just looks at you like, is that the best you've got? And what are these people made out of? Everyone comes with his dagger and tries to slit her throat. Okay, roll. Everyone is playing games here. <laughs> I love you end up with like a four or something. <laughs> <laughs> you're, like, you're like poke into her and she hisses and you pull her back out and you realise that she's got gills behind her ear and that's what you're trying to stab why right. are fish people? I cannot this is cannot. some I'm demonic done. this is done. get out we're leaving done goodbye Arismia is going to throw up on this person <laughs> <laughs> same thing <laughs> in a proper throw up yep yep okay are you yeah, what are you doing now? Now you've you shot one the to person. the head. There's no one, it's just a cart, I think. The cart's right, mm-hmm. that's you, right next to you, and all this pile of loot's next to you as What well. is the driver doing? He's basically standing, he looks like he's, like, learned just to mind his own business and not pay attention to what's going on. Is it so, the same driver? Yep. Okay, then everyone's going to tap him with his tail on the shoulder. He says, don't you think it's time to go? The driver sort of looks you up and down and then goes... Why are you naked? Don't ask questions. Just get in the cart. It's time to leave. please ask the la pasta. Can we hurry? Okay. So Darren you jumps up next to the driver. Are you taking any of the loot, or are you leaving all the loot behind? We're We're take, I'm taking as much as I can. He's done. So is taking whatever she can get her hands on. You. I'll hand her stuff. You get back in the cart and you flee very quickly from the city. You pass all the other cities on your way past, back, you don't stop and there's anyone you can avoid stopping in. And eventually you get back to the main city and you come speak to the merchant. Well, uh, that, that, did you find did you find my son? Mr. Dawn Spring, yours your son Dawn Winter. Dawn Winter? No. Dawn I Dawn, wrote Dawn Spring. Second, Dawn, season. Dawn, Dawn season. Dawn season? And then he just starts clicking Dawn for Darren Whisper. to give the right name. Dawn Whisper. Dawn Whisper. Dawn Whisper. Dawn Whisper. Mr. Dawn Whisper. Yes. Your son was unfortunately killed by a cult of fish people. Yes, he ref- he, he had not paid them. What no, do you mean, my no, son no, no, was no, killed no. by fish people. No. no, he drank he drank this he drank this alcohol and then he got thrown into a pool and then he turned into a fish man and then he did things that people shouldn't talk about with a whole bunch of women who were very strange and oh my gosh, I never ever ever ever, ever want to do stuff like that, ever. Mr. Dawn Whisper. Oh, yeah. sorry, that's not my accent. <laughs> <laughs> I think what um, Ilario is trying to say is that your son is no longer with us and we couldn't exactly figure out what had happened to him except the fact that he has died. But we are truly sorry about that. Now, please, can we have our 500 gold pieces each? I, I thought we only promised 200, but... No, no, it was 500 if... Clearly, am I correct, Darren? Ilaria? At Severin? that, Darren will step up, still in a thong, legs <laughs> wide, and he will stare the man in the eyes and say, Given what we have just experienced... <laughs> You will kindly pay us 500 gold each. Why are you in a thong? <laughs> Has Ilaria not just explained to you the situation? It is uh, no, not, not as bad as a, a dwarf ending up in a thong. Okay, let me explain the situation. There is a town, Eisenport, where your son went, yes? Yes. Okay, well... All the men do not exist in that village except for one dwarf who creates gold. Rather talented, I must say. But it it appears that there is a cult of fish people run by the woman and a matriarch of the town who then, if is killed, is replaced by another woman who becomes the matriarch. They capture all the men, tie them to wheels, strip them naked, and get them drunk with this horrible riff. What is it? Pine, alcohol, wine... Retsini. Retsina thing. Yeah. And basically take them in, chuck them into a pool, and they come back as fishmen who then have conjugal visits with all the women in the room, which is about 60 of them, and to make them pregnant to make fish babies. 
he looks at you with a, with a complete like what the hell are you talking about expression and uh, Severin looks at me he's like I couldn't make it up even if I tried Did we you... were partaking in the activities to see what had happened to your son unfortunately I experienced far too much than I was ready to please may you just pay the money so we may leave and forget that this ever happened I've got so much explaining to Ilaria to do with the birds and the bees and the fish people (laughs) that I just need to have about a month to think about how I'm going to phrase this. Did did you find anything belonging to my son? I found a spoon. A spoon? (laughs) I'm I'm honestly not even sure if it happened to your son. There's a whole bunch of stuff in the cart. You're more than welcome to look. They basically take all the loot from these men and dump it there. But honestly, I don't know your son well enough to know what his possessions are like. Okay, well, I I guess I will go and look through that loot. Thank you. Here's your gold, and he pays you all each. I am very sorry about your offering. So that is the end of the one shot. Thank you very much. Huzzah! Oh, yeah, yeah. Damn. That was amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> no problem. Lovely. Um, but before we stop. Do your plugging. So, who is your podcast? Where are you from? What's it about you? Do it one last time. Tristan. Proper plug. What do you mean? <laughs> oh, but, uh, right, uh, no. Yeah, thank you for playing with us, actually, and for getting a hold of us. Uh, we are from Dum Dum Die, which is a podcast from South Africa, which is all female and all awesome, which is strange coming from me because I'm the token male in the group. But we release once a week on a Wednesday and we are two seasons in and it's super great and these are the players. Yeah. Where can they find you? Oh, yeah. So you can find us on all social media at D-U-M-D-U-M-D-I-E uh, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram and then we also have an email address which is dumdumdiepod at gmail.com and we respond to almost everything that we get. Okay. And you're on SoundCloud as well? Yes, we are. Also, Dum Dum Die. Is there anything else you wish to plug while you're here? Anything coming up that you want to hate people about? Oh my greatness, for October. Maybe what we could say is thank you very much to the organisers of Comic-Con for having us run their tabletop role-playing section at Comic-Con Africa. Um, it was a lot of fun enjoyed it and thank you to everybody who listens to our podcast and to everyone who came to play over that weekend all good so perfect i think all that's right. that's solid and with that dearest friends Time has run out for our tale with our group of adventurers. We hope you'll join us in taking the time to support those that dare to traverse our dungeons, and maybe even listen to their own bard's tales, for what is a good story if not shared with as many folk as can be sang to. As for ourselves, you can follow the many tales of Penance RPG through both our Twitter or Facebook at Penance RPG. If you would like to support us in our endeavours, we have both a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash penance RPG and Ko-Fi at ko-fi.com forward slash penance RPG. All support, however small it may seem, is gratefully received and will assist us in bringing future projects to your ears. And as the evil that was in the north returns to legend, and as another group are left chained forever, we only have this to say. Good night out there, whatever you are. Yeah. <laughs>